<coughs> Hello. Welcome. Welcome to what? What am I being welcome to? Hello? Oi, mate! All right, let's go find a bug in Android. Should be pretty easy. These are old. Let's try this one first. Mainly because, mainly because, uh, uh, let's just, uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of this. Oh God, that lighting is gonna be weird. I'm gonna have to fight with that, aren't I? Look at that, he even plays a little boot music. Nice. Nice. Uh-huh. Well, that's gonna take a while to boot. God, now there's all these cords on my desk. This is gonna be rough. Nice, look at that. Look at, look at that. Come on. Is there anything more you want in this year? Isn't that beautiful? Why does this camera suck? It is incapable of picking up anything that is seen in reality. <laughs> God, why is this camera so ass? Yikes. Yikes. Let me see if there's any magic I can do with that. Probably not. Hmm. Why is it amplifying the shit out of... Let's try this. Ah. Uh ah. -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, and now the camera just broke. Okay, cool, cool. So changing that setting breaks the camera. Nice. Not bad. Not a bad start. Let's see. Uh, we'll just reconnect it, and that'll fix it, right? Well, that's gone and fucked off. Nice. Nice. Ah, webcams. The pinnacle of quality. Yeah, it's really not that much better. I have no idea why. It just picks up entirely on reflection. I don't know. Maybe we'll move it. Maybe we'll move it. Yeah, but I don't have a place to move it to. Ah, so this... This is the real problem. I guess over here works, but I have to like clean off all these crumbs. We'll go flying a bit. We and and God, this camera's a piece of shit. This is why I don't do webcams, because they suck. Ah, oh, but then you have to wash my hand? That sucks. Let's see, though. Was it worth it? Nope, it didn't do shit. Well, unfortunately, that's what you're going to get, so fuck you guys. Um, all right. Let's figure out what kind of uh, Android we got running on this.
It looks very modern. This is this this might be too recent for us to fuzz. I don't want to end up finding an Ode on stream. Let's see. About phone. Will it focus? Hey. See, that ain't bad, right? I think that's fair. Android 2.2.1. Is that where we're going to start the day off? Let's get... Uh... I need another USB cable. Be right back. Yeah, this is going to be tough. So do you guys want higher quality and shitty FPS? Or do you want shitty quality and high FPS? That's the question we all ask each other. Let's see what ratios I can get here. Hmm... Hmm. We'll try this. This is a good middle ground, I think. Oh, oh, buttery smooth 15 FPS. <laughs> it's ex it's acceptable. If it's not good enough for you, then too bad. Sucks to suck. Okay, and then we have these two different scenes. Uh, we'll put it over he here. I think that's going to be the best place for it. All right, so we've got this little uh, gem running Android 2.2.1. It's never going to focus. It's never going to focus. I could set up my 
other camera, but I think that only allows for like 15 minutes of camera. Let me see. I'll be right back. Actually, actually, I don't have a... Uh, it's going to be a pain in, to set up that capture card right now, so I'm not going to bother. Anyways, we're going to go and... Apparently, my battery is low on that. Th this phone that's been sitting in storage for a decade is low on battery. So we'll, uh, we'll get that one all happy, and then we'll go and uh, find information about it online. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and get access to the kernel source on it. Um, 2.6.32.9, build number that. There's a chance that I'm not going to be able to get the source to this. So we're going to go to Samsung Open Source. And let's see what they have. Uh, like, I, I would be surprised if I even can get the build on it. Let me see if I have this as well. One second. Um. Hmm. Yeah, one second. Uh, I need to figure out all these random accounts that I have. If I even have accounts here, I think I do. It's not a good sign when I don't get an email when I request one for a password reset. Not a great sign. Not a great sign. Hmm. Well, we'll see what we can do. All right, we're going to go and try to find information on this device, which is an SCHR880. That's how it's hyphenated in the phone. Oh, my God. Document viewer open source dot zip. That doesn't sound like what I want, but it, it has my thing. Let's see. It's 300 kilobytes. Yeah, th that's definitely not it. Damn. There's a chance that we cannot find the source to this. And I highly doubt someone has. So this is called the Acclaim. Hmm. Oh, look at those specs. An ARM 6 at, what was it? 800 megahertz? Oh my god. So I think this device has, uh, yeah, there, there's like not even a page up here. The request has been recorded and blocked due to invalid user input. Sick. Yeah, so that's about the age of the phone we're looking at right now. We're going to see if we can find some... Some good stuff on this. I think this is probably related to other phones. So we'll see. Ah, a dishwasher. I suspect this is just the US cellular variant, but they probably have... Huh... Upgradable to 2.2? Ooh! Fancy! Also known as the R880. There's gotta be, there's gotta be a variant that's more popular. This is the one that's probably specific to a, uh, to a carrier, but there's probably related phones. We'll see what we can find. It's kind of the first stage, is like figuring out what we even have in front of us. Yeah, none of this is going to give me any useful information, I don't think. Um, let's see what this has. 
and we'll look for the SCH R880. And I don't want to search for news. I do want to search in firmware. Um, find firmware instead. Yep, this is what I want. Where's the search button? Where's the search button? Browse? Not, mm, pretty sure that's not right. Wow, did they remove it? <laughs> We're not even gonna be able to get the uh, firmware on it? Uh-oh, uh-oh. And we're not going to be able to get the source either, are we? Wow. Wow. Postmarket OS. Mm-hmm. Huh. See, this I would expect to have information kernel being used. No. Development tree of 3.0 of the speak the Samsung speaker. Is that what this is? An S3C 6410. S3C 6410. Okay, we can probably do with this one. Um this might do the trick. This is uh, obviously newer than what I want. 3.0 kernel. It probably at least has the devices. Um, who knows? Open source driver for the GPU. Okay. The kernel config. Ah, we have a... Do we have a full console on this? Hey, Subna, how's it going? Yeah, I've been a little busy. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to go older than this. So I'm guessing what they did is they forked the kernel, and then they added a bunch of the devices. But that's, you know, probably going to be good enough. But yeah, it looks like people tried to get Android or uh, Linux 3 on this device, and that, uh, you know, that might be good enough. <laughs> that might be good enough. Let's, uh, let's go get uh, a debug booty. Um... Android tools, I think, is going to be the correct thing that I want here. Sudo apt install. Wow. Yikes. Yikes. That's embarrassing. <laughs> it shouldn't take long. I think this is just binaries. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to get an ADB shell onto it. We can run a fuzzer on it, and I'm sure it will just find bugs. But, okay, let's go, let's go look at the Galaxy Spica. It's the same chipset, and that's all I care about, right? So we can kind of, like, jump through some hoops here. This is an i5700, and this is the international model, which is exactly what I want to see. Um, exact same processor, and this even goes back to a later date, which is really cool to see. So let's see if we have anything on this speaker. Open source update two, right there, baby. This is update two, so that might that might be advanced. Uh, I'm making an enhancement, a version upgrade for sure. Yeah, so we'll grab that, and we'll grab this. Um, and we'll try to figure out which one, which version is which. Now, the Samsung site often downloads things at, like, one meg per hour. So, uh, 
we'll we'll see when we get that in. But uh, that should be good enough. Those should be plenty fine, I think. Okay, and then we'll want to see if we can get into that boot console, and then we'll also do ADB devices. Obviously, this isn't going to work because I don't have the phone plugged in. So we're going to plug in the phone because that is uh, kind of important, I think. So we'll have this cable will be the one to the computer, and we'll get that plugged in. And if you've never done Android stuff before, we're just basically trying to get a, a shell that will resemble something kind of similar to what you get with SSH, but we'll use that uh, ADB, which is the Android debug bridge, to get into that. Um, we're going to become an Android developer uh, really quickly by just tapping on probably the build number a couple times. Maybe not. Maybe the Android version. Uh, maybe it's already... Maybe it's already here. I can't remember on this phone. I might just have ADB. Nope. So I have to go and find the developer thing. And these touches basically take forever to hit. So we're just going to click all these. And hopefully one of them starts saying, like, you're almost a developer. Mm. God, this phone is very unresponsive. Uh, status. I don't think it was under status. And... Did they have a different way to enable developer mode on this? Development. USB debugging. It's a completely different menu. Okay, sick. All right, you de we got debugging enabled, and then sometimes you just have to reattach the device because that's just how that works for some reason. So we'll do this. Plug it back in. Hopefully we'll get a prompt. Oh, boy. Um, hmm... Did this add a user? No. I wonder if this is just such an old version of um, Android that that's not even going to work for us. Debug mode, yes. <laughs> it might be that old. It might be that old. Um, let's see. I think this one I have ADB set up on, so we'll try and we'll try and boot this phone and see if ADB works with it. We'll first make sure we have ADB working, and if it is working, there's a chance that that device is just too old. Come on. Yeah, so that, that works. Um, so we have ADB working. So that is not the problem. Um, the problem is this specific device. So we'll see. Uh, let's try a reboot, see if that does anything for us. I, I highly doubt it will. That doesn't really make any sense, but, you know, sometimes... Sometimes you get what you get with these. Boy, that's a long shutdown. Come on. I wonder if ADB just can't communicate with something that old. Which would be kind of silly. I don't think the protocol's that crazy, so... I mean, there's a chance that we, like can't even get access to this device in a meaningful way. Obviously, we could, like, ship a, ship an application down to it through the Play Store. Actually, this won't even connect to the Play Store. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, I don't think it's going to play. Well, that's no fun. We might just have to go to a different device. USB debugging, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just not going to like that, is it? Hmm. Well, uh, what we can do is let's go look at that source. 
Um, it's almost done downloading. Okay. I'm not gonna fight this device too much. Obviously, we could we could eventually get code running on this in some way or another, pretty easily. But I'm just not really gonna bother something that is not very conventional, which this is looking to be in the unconventional category. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll do this, this. All right. Okay. So this should be downloaded, right? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So. Yeah, and we're just not going to get ADB on here. And I don't really want to grab an old version or anything. We'll just take a look at the uh, update 2 of this. And tar XF. This. Let's look at the kernel source here. Uh, and Eclair. That is 1.6. No, no, that that is 2.2. Uh, uh, Android Eclair. Oh, 2.0 and 2.1. Okay, that's good enough. Um, but it doesn't really matter. So, we'll just see. We have a build.sh. That looks a little borked. Obviously, that's not for the right phone, but yeah, I guess what matters right now is whether or not we can get a shell onto this. So let's see, um, uh, let's find if we can get uh, USB debugging on this. I see, those are for different devices. I don't know if this will have it. I'm mainly looking for the chipset. Um, it was this, the S, this, right? This was the one, uh, 2410. They can have pull-ups here and they can be defined at this location. Uh, do you need root for proper Android security research? Absolutely not. Base offsets, read that. So they talk a big game about this, but I'm not seeing anything. Simtech Electronics. I'm mainly looking for like a resistor value here to try to figure out if there's a way that I can get uh, a serial console. And they talk about this, but there's not much information on it. And this is an old chipset, so I have no idea um, what they would even have. There's a chance they don't even have a serial terminal output on this. Like, I... Let's see if we can find any info. I think it's all controlled in software, so we would probably have the code to that if it used it. So... Unless this is not the right chipset. I thought that was. The S, uh, SC, S3C6410. Okay. Find star grep 64, uh, S3C, 64. Okay, I like to see that. 
Um, um, hmm. You art VA mapping, okay. S you art. Add you art this. Okay, I'm guessing this isn't even compiled in. Doesn't look like it, because we have the config here. Oh, maybe not. Um, so the def config is this. Why does that not exist? Well, that's not even in here. This path isn't even in here. Um. Let's try the other uh, source. We have this. That was update two. Let's just do no update. Wow, I've never seen one like that. Okay, there we go. Uh, UART. Low level UART port two. Uh, okay, maybe this is gonna be a better fit for us. Um, this is really old. I've actually never seen a, a kernel formatted like this. Yep, that's how to build it. We have that uh, default config there, which is fantastic. And then we're mainly looking for something you already. Okay. Oh, that's the actual port number. Hmm. Um, we're the 64, 10. VBus, GPIO. Okay, there's a couple things. These things are, I've seen 1.5K ohm here, but I think that's something else. Sixty four ten, pull both. So Huh. Let's see. I actually love working with old stuff because you just don't really know what you're going to get. So, that's for the USB transceiver. Who even knows what that is? I mean, we could try a 1.5K resistor, but I just kind of doubt. Let's go into this platform. And gets the state of the pull up and pull down. And this is where it's defined, but I don't really see where it's using these, if it is. So let's see what these helpers say. Yep. Yeah, I don't actually see where those are being used, unless the, it registers those as, like, uh, device handlers. Okay, there we go. Get pull on this. Let's see if there's any mentions of a UART in here. Mm, 
zero through nine K. Zero through nine K. Um, and then I kind of want to space there. One or more zero through nines. Probably a space before it. So there we have a mention of a 1.5K resistor. But that's kind of it. I, <laughs> I actually don't know. A lot of times these are like pretty undocumented, so like finding the resistor values can be tough. Um, yeah, I guess we can try to get an old Android tools, but I don't like doing that. Yeah, no ADB devices. Yeah, we'll try and get this old version. Hmm. Yeah, this Android tools doesn't even build this old one. Yikes. I can maybe download a pre-built one. I'm trying to look at other old versions right now. Um, let's try uh, 610 then. Tools, this. Hopefully this works, but yeah, they're just using some like, basically anytime you deal with anything that does crypto, just things don't work after five years because they deprecate some of the crypto fields and algorithms, and then everything just fundamentally breaks and never will work again. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, those just aren't going to build. Does any other USB stuff work? I mean, they're really isn't anything else. I mean, I'm sure there is like an ADB, uh, a fork of ADB, but I mean, we could try and just guess resistor values and see if we uh, get lucky, but that's not necessarily easy, but we can see what we can do here. Grab this, let's make sure this is wired up correctly. And it looks like everything's fine on this and Hopefully, we'll be able to plug this in and get a debug shell, but I kind of doubt it. Um, okay. So I'm just plugging in my UART to this, and then we're going to try random resistor values. If I can find my resistor box.
All right, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if we can find it, but I, I suspect we're just not going to be able to get this to work because we're just kind of guessing random things here. Can't really show much on this because the webcam sucks. But uh, we'll just go to this, I guess. But mainly, we're just going to plug in a UART with a resistor across the ID pin. And we'll see if we can make any magic work there. And my guess is going to be no. Just need to make sure I get good contact on those leads. That looks good. Come on. I should get some proper banana plugs for this, but this'll do the trick. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just flip to random resistor values. So uh, we've seen 1.5K, so we'll go to 1.5K. And the problem is you have to reboot the phone to do this, so it actually takes a really long time to look through like a reasonable amount of things. So we'll do... Uh, Um, mainly trying to find what, uh, oh, there you can see the SC36410 is the serial number of this. Probably should have looked at that. That would have been a, that would have been a smart idea. We can see that attached and detached a bunch, but I'm mainly looking for this FTDI UART here and what device it got bound to. And... Am I... Crazy that oh TTY USB zero okay ooh and they're often not uh one fifteen two hundred I always use screen for this I don't know why since it's Gini code I wonder if this is gonna have a long build time hopefully not. Think exploiting a bug on old iOS would be harder? Yes, absolutely. Android didn't really have any security until like 2015. It was an absolute joke. Okay, and then we'll basically plug in this magical thing. Um, that Wow, that came out of there in a way that it was not supposed to. Shit. How is that connected? Hopefully like that. This wasn't really meant to be moved around too much. Uh, so, what? No fucking way. Really? Hello? <laughs> what? No way. Um, what? Why can't I exit this? Can you not fucking detach from screen? There we go. Um, let's just try different uh, different bit rates. Come on, you fucker. This is gonna work, right? Did we really get that first try? We saw stuff print. Now that might have just been noise during the like connector disconnect. Um, maybe it's like thirty-eight four hundred. Thirty-eight four hundred is a thing, right? I'm shutting it down. We'll boot it back up and we'll see if we get anything. Come on. Damn. Maybe we just saw noise from the uh, connection. I, I think that's unlikely. 
I really do. We saw like a lot of uh, different keys there. So I think that's unlikely. Like, I think we actually got output from this. I don't know why or what. But we saw, we saw stuff show up. Come on. Unless it's literally just the way that we connected and disconnected things, but... I have headphones that don't like getting power at the same time that I'm doing this, but... I don't know, that doesn't seem to be doing it. Hmm... Well, let's switch back to ADB mode, wherever that cable was. Now I regret putting all of the phones in this one spot. I think this is the cable. So we'll try to go into ADB mode by plugging that in. And then we'll switch back over. Let's see if that does us any good. Jeez. No. Yeah, I don't know why we saw things before, to be honest. Hmm. Well, that's kind of fucked. Um... Yeah, I didn't kill the old screens, did I? Oh, let's see if that, that probably is it. How do you actually close screen? Yeah, we're getting no reaction like we did that first time, but we also like pulled things out. Hmm. There's also a chance that right now there's just no D message output, which is always really frustrating because it's sometimes really hard to know. But Android is typically like pretty spewy about things like that. So. We also booted it with that resistor attached, so hopefully we didn't put it in a different mode. Mainly, I just want to reproduce uh, what we saw before, um, which would be kind of nice, which is seeing just the random speed garbage to the screen. But uh, yeah, that is USB debugging attached. Obviously, that's not going to work. That'd be nice if it did. And then switching over, we've seen spew before when we switch but we're not seeing it now. I just think it's really unlikely that I had that much noise on the bus that the actually made it work, but uh, yeah, because we saw that before. I don't know why my screen like stops working there. Yeah, that's kind of strange. Yeah, control AK is, is just not working. At all. I, I have no idea why. Like, AD works. Well, AD sometimes doesn't work. It, it's It kind of just, like, seems like it randomly just doesn't work. What a piece of shit. Nice. Um, maybe try to connect to ADB over Wi-Fi. That doesn't work unless you have configured the device to do that. Um, so... Yeah, I have no idea why screen is behaving like this. Now this makes me really question if screen is actually working or not. 
Um, because if screen's not working, then I can't really reliably do anything here, can I? Can you just manually kill the screen sessions? Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, no, I put on this. I don't know. Unless I bumped one of these resistors, but no, those look good. 1.5K. Like, I, I know we, like, unplugged this whole bank and plugged the whole thing in. And, like, we kind of ripped that out, but I just... I feel like the odds that you get enough noise... Okay, okay, then maybe there was enough noise in connecting and disconnecting that to get what we saw. Okay, I think we've made no progress there. Alright, um... Now, depending on the phone, sometimes you can flip through these values. Uh, and see if you get uh, debug output on any of them when you switch into them, but I think like 590 is a common one. Or is it 570? I forget. It might be 490 and 570. But some of them, some devices you need to reboot to get it to take effect, and others will take effect immediately. Um, and it's just kind of random whether or not you get it. And this is an old enough device that I don't think there are necessarily standards that it's complying with. So I'm just basically flipping through random resistor values here to see if there's anything that hits. We have no idea what the baud rate is, but I'm guessing uh, it doesn't really matter what the baud rate is. We'd probably see some spew. Actually, we probably want to go to a higher baud rate on this side, so we'll do that quick. And... Hmm... Uh, 115, 200. And then we'll just flip through these. Basically going 10K at a time through each value. And that should get us close enough. These things typically aren't that finicky. But, once again, sometimes they have to attach and retach for these to take effect. Yeah, I've never seen anything up in this 700. So let's see if we can get this setup working now. I don't even know what phones uh, this feature works on. I think the S6 uh, it works on. That's an S7. Um, I think this is an S6. So I'm pretty sure the S6 uh, will boot with this. And I can't remember what resistor value. I have it on 570. It might be like 490 or something, but we'll see. We'll see if we can flip through a couple different ones. Make it work. This is mainly just to make sure my setup here is working, which I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Might be 590, might be 470, might be 300 something. Yeah, I forget what the value was, unless it wasn't the S6 that I had this working on. Actually, I should have notes on all of this. I don't even know where I would have these notes. Huh. Uh, 
Okay, this is a G920F. Uh, so 150 or 690. So we'll get to 150K. See if we can get that to work. Okay, now I'm really questioning the environment. Should be an S6. G920, yeah. Sometimes these things vary based on the firmware versions too, but I might also have to go into the bootloader to get this to work. So that is something that I can't remember if I had to do that on this phone or not. We'll, we'll do one reboot on 619K and see what we get. Or the screen is not working at all, which I'm, is possible. Hmm. Yeah, I think I make a mention of going into the bootloader for this one. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I actually went into the um, bootloader to enable the boot screen for that. Um, so unfortunately, that one might be out of the mix. And now I don't know where that one was plugged in. Looks like there. Um, 619 on the 900F, which should be uh, this one. No, that's not 900F. Where is my 900F? There it is. Yeah, with the silly flappy cover on the port. Bloop, 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 bloop. Nice battery bulge, too. That's good to see. Good and healthy. Nice and healthy battery there. Always love to see that. It means there's more capacity in the battery if it bulges, I think. I think that's how that works. Okay, so one problem with having power delivered to this cable um, is that you're not able to uh, boot the phone during the initial uh, screen that the battery light comes on, or like the battery status indicator. But we have this on 619K. And hopefully this works. But it doesn't look like it's going to. So now this is making me really question the entire environment I have here, or if this phone no longer has that enabled. This should be a 900F. Let's see, quick. Yeah, that's a 900F. The bulge is where the blue smoke is stored. Yeah, so I'm not even getting that one. And I say 619K, uh, it seems like I need to hold volume down during the boot process on this. That's the rumor. That sounds like bullshit. I don't know why I would have that written down, because that doesn't seem like something I remember ever doing. Wow. Unless I fucked with the uh, bootloader settings on this. Like, all these phones are in completely weird states. Um, where I've hacked up bootloaders for a lot of them. Okay, that wasn't, like, fully connected. But I don't think that was the problem. Hmm... Well, now I'm questioning if screen works or if that cable works. Um, hmm. Do I have any notes on that one? J10Y. Problem is, I don't know what a lot of these phones are. <laughs> uh, 
532F. Nice. This one says it should work, but I also went into the bootloader for this one. So, historically, I forget how I actually get into the bootloader here. It's never trivial, and I'm really questioning if screen's working, but hopefully we can get into a bootloader here. I really just don't think screen's working. Like, actually, that's the only thing I can think of right now, is, like, screen just literally is not working. Like... Or I fucked up one of these uh, pinouts, which I doubt. So... I need there. Um... So that should be ground. Oh, holy shit. The uh, resistor thing popped off. Jesus. There we go. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, so, that is this device, and we'll see if we can get into the bootloader on this. Okay. Restart this. Getting into the bootloader can be an absolute pain in the ass, but we're going to try it. Come on, you fucker. Damn it. So we saw the bootloader, but um, we weren't able to get in. Uh, let's try it again. We should be able to get into this bootloader. So, yeah, I should make this into a, I should actually solder this board down and, like, turn this into a little jig that's kind of a permanent fixture with banana plugs, but, you know, haven't had time to, or haven't, hasn't really been that important. When I'm not on stream, right, I have, like, a much better setup where it's not all crammed in one spot, so. Oh, man, waiting for these things to boot sucks. I'm curious if I flip to a different resistor if I lose this. Doesn't look like it in this case. Maybe I do. Hmm, fork fail. Oh no. So I forget what sequence I used on these to get into the bootloader. This device goes like pretty unresponsive to uh, key presses here, which is kind of strange. Like, the boot button doesn't seem to work in the early stages. We're going to try... Um... Oh, I think I missed that window for sure. Yeah, I definitely missed that one. Son of a bitch. Okay, well, fuck that device. Um, Let's see. This one should work too, then. Uh, this one might not work when it's booted. We have it set to 619, and we have no output, and then we'll see if rebooting it, we can get into it. There we go. Um, so you can see bootloader information, but we actually don't get, uh, terminal output. And this is the device that I said that holding power down, or, um... Volume down seemed to help get a, get the kernel output on this. So we'll see if uh, holding volume down works on this. So I need to reboot it, unfortunately. And rebooting takes forever. Mainly because booting takes forever on these fucking things. God, Android is so bad. <laughs> it's so unbelievably bad. I don't understand how you write such an inefficient operating system. I mean, I do. 
So use Java as the main language. So we're going to hold volume down this time and see if we can actually get k-message output. Yeah, holy shit. Um, that's pretty crazy. Um, I don't remember that being a thing, but clearly it is. So never able to actually get that output. Now, depending on if we can get into the bootloader of these other phones, we can maybe go and just get a shell directly um, through the UARTs. Um, so we'll keep this on the 619K. We know that that works on like a couple of these phones, and I'll make a little stack of phones where we can get into the bootloader. But I think I have flashed those phones to a later version of Android, and I'm not going to want to look at a later version of Android. So I'll plug that in here. Make sure everything's pushed down. And we'll see what we can do here. This one doesn't even have a reboot button. It's that old of Android. It just has a shutdown. <laughs> All right. Oh, baby. Oh, fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Wow, auto boot, press any key to stop. Okay, um, load PNG, that's loading the Samsung logo. Oh fuck, that ripped out. Son of a bitch. I might have to like solder this into a more stable thing. Because the way that I'm holding this, these cables are too short for, like, holding it over this box while on this mound of phones. Um, oh, yeah, and then that one doesn't really matter which is which. Okay. So we saw some more output there, but that could have been from noise when we connected it. Uh, we're going to see if we can get into the um, bootloader on this, which it looks like we should be able to. So I'm shutting it down right now, and then we actually see some output when we shut it down. So, when we shut it down, it seems like it transfers control back to the bootloader and does a little little dance here. Yeah, see? Oh, that's actually loading the um, battery stuff. This is the battery. Uh, okay, so it's in the bootloader, and this is for the battery stage of things. Wow, cool. Built on December 25th of 2010. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, I think I wrote a tool to get into these bootloaders. There we go. Nice. Hello. Hello, bootloader. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is unnecessarily complicated. So I'm going to make notes of this quick. Um... Uh. Okay, so we have help and um Let's see uh print environment. Okay, so this is showing the uh Wow, so TTY SAC 2 at 115.200 is the kernel command line. So we're going to just boot um, and see if that's going to let us boot. The device is kind of stuck. I have no more input here. Set kernel param, setting that. So it's hard to say if I have the right resistor value. I don't know if this resistor value even matters to get into the bootloader here. Um, kind of hard to say, but I think the bootloader crashed there or something. Don't really care. So hopefully we can hard shut that down. It might be volume down for this one. And I can try volume down.
But that is the first <laughs> user-controlled input that we found into this. Oh, son of a bitch. This phone might have been prior to having the, um, like, hard shutdown, hard reboot. Uh, this phone, I'm going to need to pull the battery off. Woo! Classic, dude. Let's see if I can boot this without a battery. If I can, then I can just disconnect and reconnect. Nice. Oh, look at that. When there's no battery in it, um, it just boot loops. <laughs> it just boot loops. Okay, cool. Good to know. That's information. And I'm afraid that's going to try and boot right away on me. Come on. You... That USB connector sucks. Okay. So theoretically, um, why don't I have a serial port? Did something disconnect? No, doesn't seem to be the case. We know this kernel is configured to to output to uh, TTY SAC two. Um. So we're trying to get into that bootloader again. I guess we can just pull the battery on this, and that's going to be how we're going to reboot these. Unless it needs to boot once for this output to work, but I don't think that's the case. Um, kind of afraid something is disconnected here, but I don't think that's the case. And I'm going to restart screen just in case screen is being a pain in the ass. Okay, because I feel like I should be able to get some output here. And I don't know why I'm not. Yeah, I'm getting nothing. We'll see if we have to reboot that. Um, that, um, the serial port might get initialized by the kernel, and it might not work the first time. So, and then what's the other common 150k ohm? We can try that. These UARTs are really finicky. Getting these things to actually work is never easy. Um, this is also not indicative of standard Android hacking because typically you just have an ADB and you can just go directly into the device. But in this case, we don't have that luxury. So we're going to disconnect this, reconnect it, and then we're going to shut this down and hopefully we'll see the output here. If we don't, then I don't know what broke or changed or what happened there. Like, those leads look good. Yeah, so that's back into the, yep, into this power. The PBL, the primitive bootloader. It could actually just land in the bootloader, to be honest. It wouldn't be too difficult. These Android bootloaders are notoriously buggy. Um, so I don't know... We're going to go into this bootloader quick. Wow, I missed it. Okay. Um, I think at one point I wrote a tool to get me into the bootloader. You have like a very small window where you can hit a key to get in it. So we're going to try... I'm switching the resistors to 150k. We'll see if that changes anything here. I don't think it will. This boot time is insane, though. So, I don't actually know. It'd be really cool to know what, you, like, 
I wonder if this is just a UART during that early boot. So, like, regardless of what you do um, during early boot, this always goes into a UART. Because I don't actually know if that resistor value did anything. Um... So, I do like this. I like that this is fighting me. This feels very Android. Come on. Nice. So, TTY SAC 2, log level 4. Is that high or low? Linux, log level. Ah, oh, that's what I've used before. So that should be acceptable. Now the question is, do I need a different UART? I don't see any information about what UART I'm currently on. Um, Kernel at like zero. Oh, nice. Nand read. Nand dump. Nand write. Oh. Oh. Can I literally just write to the Nand flash? Hmm. What's phone on? Uh. Well, that stops communication. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like how just normal commands crash this bootloader. Good to see. High quality code right there. And then we apparently can't get access to this uh, console until we boot into the kernel, it seems. So there's charging level. Yeah, it... I think we, like, lose the UART... We'll try 15k ohm here, or 1.5k ohm here. See if we get anything fancy. Um, and then we'll fire it up. But yeah, we, we seem to get no UART until it reboots once, uh, which is a sign that the kernel is basically responsible for initializing whatever part of the chip um, provides that UART, and we're kind of just piggybacking off of it when we reboot. Yeah. I don't know. There's probably a resistor value in here that would work, but I'm doing pull down. Maybe it wants a pull up instead of a pull down, but that seems rare. I don't think I've ever seen a phone that wants a pull up. But this is also pretty old school. So once again, they probably didn't standardize on anything. I think SBL was still around. Uh, or is still around. I think that's still the bootloader they use. Obviously, I'm sure they've changed a lot of the code since 2010, uh, but it's kind of interesting to see that. So we can try the volume down trick here, but I think we're just not going to get into the uh, kernel log, which sucks because uh, clearly it's using a D message output, or clearly it's using console equals, um, and I bet that would log uh, launch us into a shell. Like, I'm pretty sure we would just get a shell um, in that, and there's a chance that it's just root. On a device this old, you might literally just land in a, a root shell. So, yeah. I don't know how to prevent it from going into that mode. I don't know if there's anything I can do there. Basically, it's switching to use USB. But I don't know. I mean, I can try and flip through resistor values, but as we saw on other phones, typically this doesn't take effect until you reboot. So I think the odds that we can brute like this, pretty low. 
could probably hack something up that would work overnight. What is it? 690k was the common one? 619k? We'll put it on 619. We could also try to change the... Um, trying to think if there's a good way for me to get code execution by changing the boot arguments. Are you on vacation? I'm not. Like, if I change the boot arguments, is there anything good I can do there? Like, I can put things on the SD card, but I probably can't do anything with that SD card uh, at a NIT stage. Like, I can overwrite a NIT, potentially. Um, let's go back into the bootloader and see what we can add. I missed it. God, that window's so small. Maybe if I just hold down the key. I don't know if that's going to repeat a character or not. What's the typical workflow when conducting Android Vuln research? There isn't really a, a standard workflow for any Vuln dev of any kind. It just doesn't exist. You you go with what you go with. You have your You have your problems that you have. You need to figure out where you need to get execution in what environment on what device and you go from there um there is no standard workflow at least for finding o day there's probably a standard workflow for like end days but that's not really my wheelhouse see now i'm just fighting this now i now i like this fight now i'm just curious to see if this will let me in it comes down to winning I don't want to lose to this old ass phone. I definitely had ADB working on this at some point, but obviously things have changed quite a bit. So I'm just holding a key to get into this bootloader and we'll see if that works. No. Yeah, holding a key didn't work. In fact, what I think, I probably have that uh, transmit buffer filled up in screen. Um, and that's probably killing me. Hopefully I can run this without being root. Seems like I can't. Let me see what that device permission is. UUCP. I don't even know what that is. So we'll just do this. But yeah, I don't know... I don't know how I would figure out what resistor value to use. There is probably one that works, but it's just guessing. And then, yeah, I should write something that just send spams keys to try to get into the bootloader. I'm pretty sure I have that written up somewhere. Wouldn't be surprised. Basically, battery disconnected. Oh, that's very true. It is actually disconnected. Um, screen is terminating. What? But why? Okay, this is saying screen is not running. And since that battery popped out, oh, no, we got that, huh, we got the boot prompt with the battery out. Interesting. Yeah, I just have no idea how I'd find this, other than just, like, run it overnight and try it. Is it a resistor on the D plus, D minus, or ID pin? It's always on the ID pin. I mean, there's nothing stopping it from being on different pins, but it's it's pretty much always on the ID pin. Hmm. Um... 
it's so frustrating because we do get that cereal and then we lose it. Um, and I just don't know what would, what would give me access to that. And it's also really hard to reliably get into this bootloader, but I feel like I, I do remember writing a tool that would get me into this for this very reason. I'm just spamming keys to hopefully get in. Um, now. Okay, boot. I didn't hold the power button long enough. Yeah, and I missed it. It's like so fucking small of a window. And I bet like things are getting buffered on the serial controller and they're not actually being written out. It's like standard shit you have to deal with. Classic. All right, I think we might just call it quits on this device if we can't get anything to work on it quickly. Um, hmm. Unless there's another ADB, um, like, variant, but I, I don't think so. Um. Hmm. I'm trying to find like an alternative implementation of ADB. Hmm. Yeah, what would I want to do here? I think I just don't care enough about this device. I'd have to look at what versions of Android I have on these other ones. I also won't be able to downgrade most of them. So I think a lot of these devices I've updated it's kind of hoping to go on a on an older device. Um Yeah, I've got Android 6 on that. Oh, Jesus. That's super modern. This one Android 6 on that as well. Wow. Let's see if I can get anything on this. If I can get ADB working on it. Um, Got to get into the bootloader first. Oh. What would they have changed on the ADB protocol? Their crypto implementation? That just prevents it from working? Like, that's the only thing I could think of. I feel like that makes no sense that they uh, would change the behavior of that. Then it's probably not going to work on this other phone, too, because I think this is also Android 2. Let me see. God, this phone's old as well. Feels like Android 2. Trying to get into the bootloader quick. I could just get a guess. Oh, that put it in fast boot mode. Damn. I'm surprised this has a fast boot mode.
Starting fast boot protocol support. Damn, fancy. But yeah, I suspect they just changed the protocol implementation of ADB, which is really stupid. Come on, you piece of shit. This is really hard to open. There we go. I love the old phones where you can pop the batteries out. That one's definitely got a little inflated battery syndrome going on too. <laughs> RSD protocol support. No idea what that is. I mainly just want to reset this device. And I can't find a way to. Let's see if I, maybe if I just boot it, I can do a factory reset. All right, I'll keep looking through phones. I don't actually know what would be the oldest phone here. I feel like that S4, maybe I just don't have an old enough phone anymore. <laughs> like all of these might just be running modern Android. Which makes sense, over time I've just updated kind of all of these devices to the latest. The latest they support, which is a lot later than I expected. I expected like half these phones to be on 4. This one's probably on 4. Maybe not. Um... Uh... Okay. This is a 2.3.5 phone. Oh, wow. That has a custom kernel on it. So somewhere I probably have the source code to this. Um, let's see what this phone has. Oh, this looks like late. Oh, some of the sound effects are very Android 4. Please, 5.1.1. I can, I can probably do that. I feel like that might be reasonable. Um, trying to figure out this other phone, but I can't. Okay, I'm resetting the uh, Android 2 phone, but that's got 5.1.1. Um, I didn't even know what this is. J10Y, a Galaxy J8. Okay, that sounds very modern and fancy. That's a J5. That should be an S6. Uh, is this a Grand Prime? Okay. So this is an S7. That's definitely too recent. So I'll put that in the too recent pile. Um, this is a... I might be an S8 or an S9. This is an S6. That's going to be too modern. This one is running. This looks like another five. Although it's got the interface of four. J5, software info. 601. Damn it. <laughs> All of these are just on latest. 
This one looks like really modern. Oh, I think I got this last year. Uh, that's 8.0. Woof. Nope. So I think the the 6.0.1 maybe is viable. This one looks like a uh, five or a six. This is a 6.01. Son of a bitch. Why are these phones so damn modern? Um. I'm just shutting down these phones so they don't drain battery. How old is Android 6? Android 6 is probably relatively difficult, to be honest. S6 is not supported anymore? Why not? I love the S6. The S6 is one of the, my favorite physical uh, feels to a phone ever. It's just fantastic. What was this? This was like a 5.0. I'm just assuming I can't downgrade these. Yeah, 5.1.1. It's only three years out of date, which I don't like that too much. So this S6. Um, ah, that's got 7.0. So we'll wait for this other phone to reboot. But this 5.1.1, we can take a look at uh, roughly if ADB works on this phone, which it probably will. Um, I'm going to go and factory reset this first because that has had a device connected to it. So I'm just going to do volume down, home button, and power while it reboots. Uh, that actually goes into the bootloader. That's not what I want. I want the other one. I want volume up. So... Hopefully we got it. We're basically going into recovery here, and then we're going to try to uh, clear all the data. So we got into recovery, and then we'll do uh, wipe the cache, and then wipe uh, data and factory resets. And we'll get that going. Formatting data. Formatting cache. Unknown volume. Okay, and we'll reboot that, and we'll make sure we're running a, a, an actual kernel and everything in there. I don't, I don't know how hard that's going to be to find a bug in, to be honest. Um, Android got really hard between 4.4 and, like, 6. So somewhere in there, things started getting much more difficult. Um, so it... Historically, Android was an absolute joke. Okay, so this phone has been reset. So I've got another phone here, which is this one, which is running Android 2. Um, and it just wants me to configure everything, skip, turn off all the anonymous usage data. Oh, uh, this is back when I think this was pretty unencumbered. Skip Wi-Fi setup, and sweet, I'm already into the phone, which is fantastic. Okay, so we're going to see if we can ADB shell into this device, which is Android 2, which would be really fun. Um, so once again, we're going to have to get developer mode enabled, but, oh nice, so this had art, this had, uh, if you tap the build number a, a billion times, you get the gingerbread art, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, so I built a kernel on this, this is running a kernel I built, so hopefully somewhere I have that uh, source code. Uh, there's a chance that I don't have that archived. I think I blew away some of my like Android phone archives because I had, had so much data use. I had like terabytes of uh, Android firmwares. So I might have gotten rid of those, but we'll see. Um, applications. Manage applications. No, that's not what I want. 
development, USB debugging, okay. And that has enabled USB debugging, and we'll see if it works. Connecting USB, okay. And then we have to forcibly kill screen, apparently, because screen doesn't work. Hey! Nice! Okay, so we do have an old Android phone that we have ADB working on. So I don't know what's going on with the other phone and why it's fighting with me. You know, I don't know if I did a factory reset on this device or not, but I'm going to see if that helps me uh, at all. So this other one, the first one that we were playing with, and maybe a factory reset will get me some uh, some stuff here. Um, SD card and phone storage. Nah. There's like a privacy thing. I can't remember where I went to. I think privacy, factory data resets, reset phone, erase everything. Okay. So hopefully, maybe the other phone will come to life when we do that. So this one, we're running a custom kernel. So what we might try to do first... Um, first, let's just see if we have sue. We don't. There is... Okay, so there is sue. It's just permission denied. Huh. There's no pseudo. Um, that's actually really interesting that there is a sue. It's just, uh, eperm. So, what I want to do is I want to try and get the original firmware for this. Um, so I do have fast boot. Um, so what we're going to do is figure out what this device is running. But given I'm able to build a kernel for this, I and since I have a built kernel in here, I probably have a kernel that's uh, backdoored on this. So I'm going to try and find the original firmware and flash this. Um, so this is a Motorola Electrify. Um, and, uh, firmware. And I don't know, MB853, maybe? Is that what it's called? Yes. Firmware. Firmware for this. Boot-loader.com. This looks exactly like what I want. Added new firmware for this. Yeah, but where is it? Damn it. Um. This is just the same website. It's just, I don't think this website actually has information on it. Easy firmware. Hey, hey, this looks good. What did I say? MB853? MB853. Uh, what are these? What are these? 1FF Sunfire user. 8 point, so I have 8.5.1 is the build version I have. That's not the Android version, that's the build number. Uh, Sun USC-19, this is the latest version. Okay, so uh, hopefully this will do the trick. This looks good. This Everything looks fine here. Oh, no. Oh, no, do I have to make a fake login for this fake website? Um, what I can do is maybe see if I can get away with just searching for a more exclusive term. There we go, Android file host. So now we can just go here, and we can download it from here. So... They say this is for the Motorola Photon, but I think this is the exact same one. Uh, 451A Sun USC 19.0. Um, so that's the same as what I currently have, and that is downloading um look at that 
Look at that. It even gives us an MD5, just in case we're spooked out. Okay, so this other phone got factory reset, so now we can actually see if anything has changed here. I would hazard no, nothing has changed, but we'll try it. Applications, development, enable debugging, looks good. I'll pop this open. I know you can't see shit because I have the webcam in a shitty spot. Too bad. Okay. Yeah, it's... I could maybe try and find a later firmware for this. And maybe it's just this firmware. USB debugging connected. So it says debugging is connected. It's like, it's trying its hardest. Um, this battery is also low, that's why it's yelling at me like that. So, Android file host? Yeah, Android file host is legit. Um, let's see if we can find another mirror that's faster for this. Because this is kind of slow right now. I don't want to wait 10 minutes or four minutes. Jeez. Um, luckily, once you find the name of the file, Team US Cellular. Something went wrong. Okay, that's gone. Yeah, let's see what this other phone is. This old Samsung. See if there's a later firmware, and maybe a later firmware. That's 2.2.1. Um... Um, ooh, what Odin version? Oh, God. Oh, God, it's been a long time since I've used Odin. There's an i800 firmware. But I think that's different. It's the same, it's the same chipset, so it's possible that maybe I could flash that firmware onto it, uh, which would be kind of funny. Um... And I think this is an old enough device that they probably don't really uh, check or care. <laughs> Back in the day, you could kind of just flash whatever you wanted onto these phones, and they would just kind of go with it. So, easy firmware. R820. right, 20. I'm trying to find that version somewhere, and I'm not really seeing it. Gingerbread 236. Oh, that's for an 820. Um, let's see, R880. Oops, I don't want to dash there. Yeah, no one's going to have this because this is a specific carrier and a pretty small carrier, especially when this phone was released. So, will this be on YouTube? Sure, of course. Um... R890, that ain't what I want. It's close. Did we search for this? I think we did. Let's see if I can just search raw like that. Yeah, it's just gonna redirect me to this dead page. Um, hmm. Well, at least this, uh, this one will be able to flash. So, um, what USB cable was I using? I think this one. So, we'll just see, um, let's try and get code running on this quick. Um, what do I want to do? I'm kind of tempted to just do, um, to build static binaries for this. So first, let's um, let's see how many devices we have here. Things that we can access, and we're just gonna be Shell right now, and Shell has access to pretty much everything. Um, yeah, this should be trivial to find a bug in. We're just gonna go after a random device on the device, uh, a random device driver for this phone. It's not gonna be an Android bug because we don't need an Android bug in this case. Um, 
Basically, anything that we can access as, sh as shell is fair game. So, like, is this accessible? No. I don't have compass. Lame. Maybe I don't have access to a lot of these things. Did they actually use permissions on this? Dude, what if there aren't trivial surfaces here? That would be... I would be pretty impressed. Um... Like, I'm really surprised that these are EPERM. For, for an Android device this old? ADB enable. I have very little access to devices. Uh-oh. Um, so we can see, uh, I might grab my shitty Android fuzzer and just see if we can knock this thing over quick. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm really surprised that there aren't more things that are accessible in here. Ah, it's not gonna like that. We'll have to unplug and replug it back in. Yep. Yep. Oh, did we kill that? Did we break ADB? Okay. Oh, we broke the phone. Okay, so uh, catting all files in dev crashes the phone. So we've established at least a baseline. Um, pretty standard. Nice. You looking for sandbox escape bugs? No, we're, no, we're just trying to find any bug. We don't really care what it is. Well, um, so that that is uh, pretty indicative of standard uh, Android 2 devices. Um, pretty proud of that. That's pretty good. So, yeah. I'm going to see if I can do a reboot here through uh, holding buttons. But I don't know if this device will have that. It wasn't something people really started adding until Android 4. Yeah, and it looks like I just have no way of rebooting this phone. Um, so, uh, that kind of sucks. I think this one opens from the bottom. So I think this phone has an HDMI output, which is actually kind of cool for a device. But I don't have the weird HDMI connector they use, but, uh, okay, so hopefully that's not the last time we do that, um, and I don't think this will have last K message, so what we, what we might want to do is see if we can get a console or something so we can see what's going on when we do something like that, um, but we do have that firmware coming down, I forget how I fast boot flash that. But given I have a custom kernel on there, I'm sure I just randomly typed things and it worked. So, like, I don't know what format this is going to be in. It looks like an SBF file. Uh, fast, fast boot, fast foot. Um, oh, just flash. Probably flash boot is probably all it takes. So we'll see if we can uh, get that to work. But I guess that's actually a good spot for the phone. I think that's like somewhat visible. It's upside down, but whatever. Who cares? Um, ADB shell cat proc last K message. I think that's a um, a more Samsung style thing. Let's see if we. I have a way of logging. All the messages, um, cd var log, tail f d message. Ooh. Uh, 
Um, actually, doesn't dmessage have like a continue thing? Maybe. I just want to make sure that that continues. Can you get GDB for debugging Android? Yeah, it's it's pretty easy. It doesn't work for shit because it's GDB, but it's okay-ish. I pretty much never use GDB on Android because it never works correctly. It's just typically not work it, worth it. D message W. Yep, not gonna work here. Um. Okay. Uh. Pseudo. pseudo. Screen dev T two I USB. And let's hope we can get some serial output on this device. That would be awesome. The only downside to this is we won't actually be able to, like... Yeah, you know what? I bet this isn't going to have serial output in this way. I think that was mainly Samsung phones. What do you use instead of GDB? I don't. I just don't use a debugger. I just rarely use debuggers when, when hacking. Huh. Okay. That's not going to work. There's maybe theoretically a way, but uh, that's going to make it hard to get um, basically crash dumps. So, that's going to suck. Um, yeah, unless we can find info on it. Um, I can maybe find that source code to this. Um, I'm going to mute this before it annoys me too much. Ah, yes, one of the phones where you can't put it to silence by using the volume keys. That never makes sense to me. Um, didn't that say five minutes? That's taking so long to download. Uh, source. A 3G phone. All the open source software. Is this... What is this? Why is it on SourceForge? 19.0. Oh my god. This is just all the open source stuff? I am thoroughly impressed. Wow, it's a soft float system. External, so all of these things that they have. Util Linux, system core, kernel. I mean, that looks like the whole kernel. Bad gateway, why? Why? But why? Is that like the most downloaded thing? Not necessarily. A uh, bunch of Bitcoin things. Son of a bitch. Why am I getting bad gateway? Can I get a different mirror? It'd be nice if it stopped. Come on. Come on. I think it's just temporary. 
There's only one mirror on that. But, like, yeah, this is all of the Electrify things. This must be from Motorola. Like, Motorola put it on SourceForge. They, like, really seem to care. <laughs> Samsung, like, will release the source basically when they've been asked for it. But M set up there. Overlay Motorola provided repos on top. Is Oh, there we go, Colonel. Yes! Oh my god, that fucking download failed at the last second? Are you kidding me? Or maybe I lost internet, I don't know. So, this is uh, Sun USC 19, and that's the same one we're downloading here. So, hopefully we'll have a firmware um, that matches our kernel. And hopefully we'll be able to find a trivial bug in here um, that will be able to land in like an hour. But uh, who knows? Honestly, Motorola maybe like I've never done work on Motorola phones, so all of this is going to be new to me. I just want to get this firmware flash, so I'm on the uh, stock firmware. Welcome to Android hacking. You're basically fucking around with firmwares all day. That's that's pretty much the process. This is uh this is a pretty accurate representation. Wait, is my internet fucked? I don't think my internet's fucked. But like both of these things are dying kind of at the same time. Let's do a speed test quick. Uh, yeah, my internet looks fine. How do you fuzz Android kernel? I typically don't. I've got a tool I can use to fuzz it, but I'm just not a huge fan of fuzzing for for uh, bugs in a kernel. It's very difficult to set up a fuzzer for kernel kernel work. It takes a very long time. Oh, I canceled that and broke it entirely. Okay, so we'll try and find build no. Yeah, sort by size. So WebKit, Broadcom, WLAN. So mainly just kernel is what I want, and hopefully that has everything I need. Um, but I need to get the firmware for this, which I've now killed and. Is there really not a better mirror for this? Let's see more references for this. Just this. And I think there's only one mirror. Primary mirror, yeah. And that mirror's just so slow. Um... Hmm. So I have that kernel. Yeah. Like, obviously, that firmware will eventually download. It's just so slow, man. That is the original one. I mean, I could maybe put a sprint firmware on it. I don't think it'd matter. This is the US cellular one. So this is specifically the one for my phone. Um... I see CM, which makes me think cyanogen mod, but I don't think that's really the case. Will you ever stream kernel fuzzing? No. Boring as fuck. Um, I think I'm just throttled on this website. Um, no wait time for downloads. Auto start downloads, blah, blah, blah. Premium devs. Import from this shit. 
Because I, I swear I've downloaded stuff from here and I haven't been throttled, so I don't know. I don't know. Let me see if I have this firmware. Let me be right back. All right, um, once we have the kernel, that's gonna be good enough. We can kill plenty of time if we get that kernel. All right, um, we'll just wait on that download. Come on, kernel. I don't know why that download's so spotty. It's on SourceForge. Oh, come on! Come on! It seems like it downloads like 5 megs and then gets stuck. Yep, there it's stuck. Oh! Is that a dream come true? Nice! Um... Wow, I got really scared there for a second. <laughs> Shit, well that exploded. Um, tar XF kernel Beep. Okay, so we'll have kernel source hopefully Um, all right, let's try and find one of these. Nice. Nice. Now we're making progress. Um, oh, I wasn't looking at these perms. It's read writable by everyone. <laughs> I was looking at the user and group, not what I can actually access. Easy! Let's find a fucking bug in this. Oh, this will be trivial. There we go. Drivers, misc. NV, ODM cam. What kind of bugs are we going to have in here? 
Can we just map the entire uh, kernel address space into user land? Like every other fucking Samsung phone in the world? Oh, now we're finally getting in our groove. That have set UID? Is that a folder? That's a folder. That is that a folder? Um, let's get a Rust environment set up quick. I'm also gonna turn off the webcam uh, for that view because I don't think I'm gonna be using it much to be honest. I don't think it's of huge use. Um. Every once in a while, we just have to refresh that download. We'll get it. We'll get it. Eventually. So, I think what I did for my last Rust environment was, um, we're going to do arm unknown Linux GNU uh, muscle uh, cr cross dev h. Uh, cross dev. There's a way to list, like, all of the targets. Oh, T help. Uh, sudo cross dev. Targets. We'll do, uh, arm. Little Indian. Uh, unknown Linux muscle. And this is going to be our Android uh, tool chain that we use. So I'll try this. Oh, that's actually not what I want. Um, cross dev dash C. Uh, we want to remove this. <clears throat> I'm just looking at some notes. Okay, clear that out, and then we'll build uh, ARM Linux muscle EABI. There we go. It probably is the exact same thing, but technically, this helps uh, some of the build system things. How's everyone doing today? That's still downloading. Sweet. I should download this whole thing. <laughs> I should just mirror that. Make sure that that never goes away. I hate, I hate losing access to software. It always makes me sad. Well, I should go to bed. No, you shouldn't. You gotta stay up here and watch. Hang out. <laughs> Why am I seeing an ad? Because uh, Twitch forces them. Nice to see you doing stuff again. Hell yeah. And I haven't had much motivation recently to do anything. But I just did a Pop-Tart, so that was good. Progress was made. Pop-Tarts were eaten. Shit, now I don't even know which phone is my phone on my desk. Um, that one? I found it. I found my own phone.
I wonder if we getting a Gamozo Pop Tart signal. I don't know. I do eat a fair share of Pop Tarts. Actually, not as much as I used to. I'll eat like one a week. They're just a good snack. Um, I'm just gonna preemptively start working on this. Uh, Motorola cargo new bin. And this is gonna be um, um, we'll just call it thrower. We're probably gonna do a lot of stuff in here. This is gonna be used for many different purposes. Um, and then we'll do rust flags is equal to C linker is arm Linux muscle EABI GCC uh, user arm Linux muscle EABI user lib cargo build release target is arm unknown Linux muscle EABI. Uh, Z build standard, and then that should hopefully build us a statically linked uh, binary. Tat red get target, and we're just waiting for this compiler to build, and then also this firmware. But we can we can work on this without. Uh, I know I wouldn't have put a modded kernel on there. It's probably backdoored, but um, I wouldn't have modified any of these devices. So I'm fine doing a little research and then switching over when it's there. Pop-Tart flavor tier list. It really varies on mood. Uh, brown sugar is up there as number one for sure. It's going to be Slime Tree V2. It'll just be probably Slime Tree V negative one. It'll be a shittier version of Slime Tree. It's just really hard to write slime tree. Like, reading all the files on a system is just really, 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 really hard. But we might have to blindly find a bug because we're not going to get uh, D message output in a very meaningful way here. So we won't, won't really know how the phone panicked, uh, which is going to make life really miserable. What's a Pop Tart? It's just a shitty pastry. How have you not had a Pop Tart before? It's a, like, pre-packaged pastry. Come on. Take a streusel and compress the fuck out of it. UK base? Don't really see them here? Oh, they have to be in the UK. Don't have them in Russia? What the fuck? Only have chocolate flavor in Australia? Weird. Pop-Tart's not a thing in Europe? It should be. How is it not a thing in Europe? That's just free money waiting to be printed. Okay. Do to do, waiting for this kernel to build. You have to understand Europe is actual good food? Pfft. No, it doesn't. Maybe Eastern Europe, but Western Europe food is bland and boring. I feel like Western Europe and the U.S. have pretty similar food. Pop-Tart to Coolin is a Stroop waffle? No, it's very different. Very different. I wish. Stroop waffles are fucking delicious. Back to your nerves. 
I'm just saying, U.S. is better food than the EU, for sure. Soup waffles, yeah, for sure. Oh my god, they're so good. They're so good. Hey, Linux headers, that should be fast. Better for diabetes? Well, you know, it's not its not our fault that you're not good at diabetes. We just perfected food by adding more and more sugar to it. You invented pizza, they're my gods. But did they invent the frozen pizza? <laughs> or the chicken nugget? <laughs> See Adam and Cheese. Adam and Cheese do 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 I really need to upgrade this computer There we go It should pretty much be done now Muscle will take a second Dude, the real birthplace of pizza is Pizza Hut. That's where it was originated, Pizza Hut. <laughs> so the pizza is named after Pizza Hut? Yup. Damn right. Pizza does pizza in the name, therefore they own it. Yeah, why do you think Domino's doesn't say, why is it not Pizza Nose, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's the origin. A Dr. Pizza created the first Pizza Hut in 1903. Exactly. See? And it was in the U.S. in America where everything else is created. Ever. America just created all the best things. We made pizza. We made gunpowder. We made rockets. Literally everything. <laughs> just me and my dad works at pizza. Engineered in USA, made in China. C crafted with love in San Francisco. <laughs> nah, gunpowder was American. And, yup, for sure. We made fireworks. Yeah, gunpowder was made by Sir Gunpowder, who came over on the Mayflower. Yeah. He was working on it in England, but he didn't invent it until he, he came to the U.S. Sir Gunpowder.
He also invented the first boat, the Mayflower. Yeah. Well, that's not really true. So people actually took kayaks over to the U.S., which aren't really boats. But it wasn't until they were on U.S. soil and we made this great country did they actually make the first boat. So... Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it happened, right? It's like... People didn't really have boats until the U.S. That's another thing that wasn't really big until the U.S. Like, a lot of things didn't really come around. History, yup, exactly. And didn't they already have canoes? Well, we're not considering canoes boats in this case. And also, the, the U.S. also invented Native Americans because... Native Americans didn't exist until the U.S. was there to observe them. So, like, you know, it's just turtles all the way down. You can't argue with the greatest country in the world. <laughs> Schrodinger's Native American. Did the U.S. invent fire? Oh, uh, yeah. Did you see a fire outside of the U.S. until the U.S. existed? No, exactly. Like, and that's the thing that's crazy. The U.S. invented cameras, and then, like, all of the history that we know of, we don't really know if the U.S. existed or not. So, like, there aren't photographic proofs prior to the U.S. existing, so... How do we really know everything wasn't just made by the U.S.? Like, I haven't seen a photo of it, right? Oh, are you going to say that a drawing is a factual piece of evidence and that it can't be doctored? It's literally just made up. Who invented the U.S.? God? Duh. The Christian singular God? Only God? Duh. Why do our bills say in God we trust, you know? Like, the separation of church and state wasn't anything to get religion out of government. It was that the U.S. knew that if the church and the U.S. government were working together, it would be too powerful. So the U.S. like self-nerfed itself by removing the church out of the government. But if they had both... Oh my god, just a reckoning. <laughs> Alright, will this work? No. Oh, I have to copy that. Ah, uh, how do I do that? Um... This is a bug that actually got fixed in Rust uh, 1.48, but we're on 1.47. So, unfortunately, we have to go and fix this, which is a really, really, really difficult fix. So we have to go into user, share, or user, lib, Rust, and... I don't know, that looks kind of good. Hmm, source... Was it here? I don't know. I can just find this. Um, uh, GitHub. Let's find this. GitHub. Rust. Rustlang. Oh, other way. God fucking damn it. Hi, ah, GitHub. Why are you being stupid? There we go. Do you consider yourself a patriot in general? No, not really. I, I don't really give a shit. I'm here for science. I'm here because I was born here and it's a good country. There's really no reason to leave if you're born here. Like, it's pretty good as is. And that's it. That's all I can really say for it. It's definitely one of the top countries. And that's uh, that's good enough for me, baby.
Not really a huge reason to want to move. Um. Where is this? Why is this not sorted by date? Oh, it is. When was this fixed? This was relatively recently fixed. Um, maybe it's LVM project or something. Basically, I have to figure out where to put this. I could look on my other computer where I've already set this up. I'm pretty sure this was fixed. I forget where the, um, maybe muscle. Oh, I have source in there too. Hmm. Like, this says it's sorted by date, but I'm also calling bullshit on that. I guess it's the date of the last message. Um, that's a panic. That's not what I want. Maybe this is good enough to key off of. Panicking doesn't work. No. I don't know. Maybe I should just look at the other computer. Like, basically, it needs lib on wind. And this is just for source. And I don't understand why I can't find this. I don't think this bug was very old. Um. All right, I'm just going to look at the other computer because it'll just tell me. Okay, so, in theory, I want to go to source. Um, hmm. And I want to have uh, rust, and then I want source in here. And then source should contain the LVM project, which will be from uh, user debug. Uh, debug, user, source, debug, um, rust. Uh, devlang, rust. Where's Rust? Where's Rust? What? Um. Oh, maybe it's not in there. Uh, pseudo uh, emerge info rust dev lang. Maybe I have to just download that source quick. I, I swore I was able to just copy this. Um, users source debug dev. Lang, and then there's no rust. Sad day. Um, rust 1.47.0. 
And let's just go find... Oh, you know, I probably have it in, uh, where are disk files at? I forget where these are stored. Um, Varkash. Yeah, there we go. Um, Rust 1.47, this. Okay, and then all we want to do is grab, we want this folder to contain LVM project. What? What? Is this technically Rust C? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it is. Hey, SSP, how's it going? Oh, you're leaving. Say <laughs> later. <laughs> See ya. Sorry, I read that wrong. Um. Source LVM project. Okay. So now this should theoretically build. Oh, we are using the same terminal too. Ah, uh ah, -huh. uh -huh. easy. Okay, so now we have a binary, and we should have a target um, arm Linux release thrower, uh, and it should be statically linked. Yep, statically linked with debug info right there. Looks great. So then I can do a make file, and then we'll do an adb push this to data local temp thrower, and then adb shell chmod... 755 of this, oops, um, this. So basically we're pushing the binary to the phone and then we're gonna run it. And hopefully, bam, we've got Rust running on an ancient Android phone. <laughs> nice, okay. Um. How cool is that? Isn't that nifty? Isn't that fucking cool? Um, use standard FS. Uh, here, we'll just uh, um, get a listing of all files on the phone. So we're gonna do a recursive lister of everything on this. So we'll do um, uh, list files. We're gonna temporarily just have it take no arguments, but we'll change that pretty fast. List files, and now we can do Rust on this. Um, and then also, since the toolchain is custom, um, we can uh, like check this out. We can look at uh, object dump ld target uh, arm this release thrower. And we'll have uh, source line information for even things uh, in the libc, right? Because we built libc ourselves, and we built everything with debug and with no stripping and with saving the source off. So we can actually see, actually the Rust stuff doesn't have that um, because we need to do this. Profile at release, debug is true. And now we will have that for everything because all of the code is going to be built um, for this binary on this machine. Uh, 
Uh, and we do have libc, which is cool to see. Okay. Yeah, now it's taking longer to push because that binary is massive. So apparently USB on this device is very slow. So we would actually want to strip these binaries before we push it down. Um, because, but now if we look at this, it's going to take a long time. Uh, we'll have source line information for everything. Every single thing on this is going to have source line info, which is really cool. Um... So we should be able to strip this since it's statically built. So I'm just going to do uh, um, strip. Hmm. Uh, dash O. Does that output it instead of doing it in place? I think so. Yeah. Strip O. Um, thrower stripped. And I'm just going to copy this just so I'm not using these long paths. Um, just because we're going to probably take a look at this binary more. Um, thrower. Okay, and then we'll push thrower stripped. And I'm fine stripping all symbols. I don't care just about debug symbols. Uh, I can literally do everything. Um, there we go. And that's going to strip it uh, even more, which is nice. Okay. Right, push that, make, yeah. So that's pretty stripped down. Uh, it actually takes a long time for that to ship, which is pretty crazy. And then we should be able to print this. Like, everything still should be working. Nice. Okay. Um, for uh, path in standard FS reader, um, we'll reader that. We'll put a question mark on this. We'll return an IO result. Um, use standard IO result. Basically, we're going to get a listing of all files on the system that we can access. Um, so this is going to determine the permissions of all of the files on the system that we can touch. Um, because it's easier to just touch all of the files than try to uh, make sense of permissions of files. In this case, we don't have SE Linux, but if we had SE Linux, that's even more the case. Go through each file, and then... Uh, okay... Uh, expect failed to list files, and I think we're going to have to make this failable because some of these files we won't be able to list, but uh, let path is equal to path, question mark, dot path, and print this, and this is get the uh, path for this uh, file, and there we go. So those are all of the files on the root uh, directory, so that's fine. Then we're going to do a p as ref path, path p. We'll do p here, use standard path, path. And now this will take an argument. We'll just give it slash, and that should be the same. Once again, it works. And then we'll say uh, if path is dir, something like that. I don't know if that's correct. Holy shit. First try. If it's a directory, then we'll do list files, recursive programming uh, of the path itself. Uh, recurse uh, recur ugh, recurse if it's a directory. And then I don't know if we have to worry about symbolic links right now, but we'll think about that. Uh, permission denied. That's fine. We're just going to ignore the errors here. And we'll say, uh, if path is file, um, if it's a file, then um, add it to the listing. Uh, listing push uh, path here. And then we'll just do uh, listing is immutable vector of path buffs. So uh, let mute paths is vec new. Now it's failable. Um, it's not completely failable, but whatever. Mute paths. Boop. And we're also going to probably want to dump this to JSON, so we'll probably pull in JSON and, and write this out, because uh, this listing is going to take a long time on this device. Um, listing. Q. 
can't infer type. Really? You can't? Oh, because uh, I haven't pulled in path buff. Hey, Masters, how's it going? Um, Borrowed after move, we'll just ref it. Beautiful. Okay, so now we should be able to print all of these paths. And hopefully it doesn't get stuck. Okay, um... Let's see. Um, I need to ignore symlinks, I think. So let me see if there's a good way for me to do that. There's probably like an is symlink or something. Is absolute, is relative. Symlink metadata. Um, what do I want to do here? Do I just want to ignore symlinks? Can I just get metadata? How do I figure out if something is a symlink or not? I actually don't know if there's a good way in Rust. Um... Hmm. There's a dot symlink metadata. Queries the metadata without following symlinks. Yeah, that's not what I want, though. I mean, I can... Is relative... Metadata file type? Is symlink? Okay, sweet. Um, skip symlinks. Uh, if path metadata dot uh, file type is symlink, continue. Uh, something like that. Oh, so those aren't symlinks, I guess. Um... So, yeah, I guess in this case, uh, well, that doesn't really make sense to me. Clearly that's recursing. Mount points, maybe? Yeah, it could be. Oh, it needs to be symlink metadata? Wait, no. You sure? Oh, yeah, totally. Thank you. Um, nice. Okay, so that went through everything, which is good. Um, read that. So basically, ignore errors on recursion, but whatever, in this case, we keep them. Okay. And then what I can do is um, pull in, I guess we'll pull in uh, Saturday JSON here. Hopefully it works with muscle. I think it should. I think everything in, in Rush should work. Um, dependencies, Saturday JSON 1.0. And then I need, like, I wish they had better documentation for the, uh, for Saturday. Because you need to all, you basically need to always use derive. I guess in this case we're, we're technically not doing it. But we'll do, um, and then we'll just go to dev. Because that should be a smaller directory just for testing. And we should be able to do, uh, Saturday JSON serialize, I don't know, pa uh, paths. It's something like that. 
Bumster. Oh, is it dot two string? Wait, what? From slice, from reader, that's to convert from. What is it to? Two string? Is that it? Uh, is that a new? Yeah, that makes no fucking sense. Why is it telling me to do that? Serta JSON two string, yeah. Oh, maybe I had to like pull in that. Uh, okay, anyways, so um, we can do two writer. If const ca uh, cache listing is equal to um, path, path new, uh, data local temp, or we can just say relative, I think, hopefully. I don't know what my current working directory is, but whatever, we'll just say uh, files listing dot listing. And I don't know if that's a static. Nope, it's not. So we'll just do a stir. So this is the um, file name JSON, because it's technically JSON, of the directory listing cache. And we'll say if path new cache listing is file, if this is not a file, uh, check if the cache exists. If it doesn't, then we load that, and then we'll do to writer on that, and we'll do uh, let mute um, writer is equal to uh, buff writer new file create cache listing question mark there and then that'll probably take a mute writer as like a first argument okay so this is uh, get the directory listing this is write out the uh, directory listing information Cannot use question, yup. Just have this return a IO result. And then, okay. Um, use standard FS file, uh, self, and buff writer and write. Okay. So that's going to write out that directory listing, obviously. Okay, uh, data local temp, boop. And we're technically not using write because Serde is the one using write internally. So obviously that's going too fast now. And we'll have paths here. Get the directory listing. Otherwise, uh, paths is equal to Serde JSON from writer. Is there a deserialize? Um, from reader. Ah, yeah. Duh. Not from writer. Uh, from reader. Do the same thing here. Reader is equal to this. Uh, file open. Uh, buff reader. This is our read the uh, cache listing uh, reader. That have to be a mutable reference. Buff reader. Uh, it's never read. Yep. So print this many files. Uh, paths.len. 36 files. Okay, that is on dev. So this will still print 36 files because it should be going to cache, and it is. 
Um, so we'll temporarily just break this. This will overwrite it. And then I'll fix it. <laughs> Hello, Moto. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, so now this should run much faster because it's just loading that cache, right? Um, none of the information has changed or anything there. Quick solution. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to type out remove ADB shell RM. Um, okay. Isn't that cool? We've got all this stuff just running on an ancient phone that was never intended to run Rust. So fucking cool, man. Um. Okay. So. We're gonna have a couple problems here. Um. Let's see if there's actually K message on this device. Uh, ADB shell. There is cat proc K message. Ooh, can't read it. So there's D message. Basically, I want to figure out if I panic this kernel, how am I gonna get the panic log? Um. Oh, I don't have access to that. Um. Wow. Yeah, we don't have find, we don't have grep. Um. So. Oh yeah, is that uh, firmware done? Hopefully we don't brick it, but uh, let's just grab that and put it in a nice directory. We'll do that here. We'll go into Motorola, copy downloads 1FF to here, tarxf 1FF, uh, gunzip h. And I want to keep the old one. So this is apparently signed. I didn't know they had signed stuff for this. So, okay. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna flash this onto the phone. Um, first, I'm gonna confirm that it's using a custom one. And I have to get into settings. I don't even know how to do that. Settings, about phone. Yeah, so the kernel version right now, which you can't see, now you can see. Um, come on. Why won't that fucking focus? I don't even know if it's auto-focusing, is it? It auto-focused earlier. What a piece of shit. I'm planning to get a much better like camera set up for this. Um, yeah, it says it's on autofocus. Well, I have it on manual focus now. There we go, I'm trying to find it. It like lags every time I set it. I don't know why it gets clear only for like one small amount. Oh, oh, it went to sleep. Okay. Come on. It's not going to work, is it? Dude, that is some shitty autofocus. Like, that's front and center. Like, how is it focusing on other stuff? Like, that's really annoying. What if I do, like, the whole thing? Nice autofocus. Anyways, it's a fucking custom kernel. What a piece of shit. Ah, oh, fucking hate. Wait, what, like, why are cameras always so goddamn bad? Um, there's apparently zoom. I can zoom. That's some advanced stuff. But yeah, 
basically the focus, it like restarts the camera each time I hit focus. So I guess you probably see that choppiness, but it's it pretty hard to like actually do anything. Okay, there we go. We actually got a decent focus level there. Uh, we'll just leave it on that. <laughs> Anyways, that's the, uh, that kernel version saying root at buildy. Clearly I built that kernel myself. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and flash this. So we're gonna put it into fast boot mode. Um, power off. And then I think it was just like volume down and power and we're gonna try and get this into fast boot. There we go, it looks like I'm in fast boot. Um, fast boot list. And I think that takes a while for that mode to end up like being happy. Maybe I should just set the zoom level to this right here. As long as I make the, or the focus, as long as I make the focus really good right there, should hopefully be good. Um, do, do, do. I'm just surprised how fin finicky that fo uh, that focusing is. That was pretty good. I don't know if that's getting better. I think that was. That's like kind of max focus. Yeah, it seems like it only gets better as I set it lower. Okay, I think I have to hit a button here. Oh. Oh, I see. It gives me a menu. Okay. So I probably fucked it up. I had a button that I, I don't know what it was. Yikes. So basically, I think it's up. Uh, volume up actually selects a menu entry. So we'll just hard reset that device. And we'll boot it back into that mode. Okay, so now that it says fast boot, I'm going to do volume up. And that is... Uh, starting fast boot uh, protocol support, and I don't know where it's actually focused. Looks like right there is good. Okay, so I think this is the USB that's plugged in. So we should be able to do uh, fast boot list, and I don't think this protocol has changed. Oh, maybe it has. Hmm. Um. Fast boots. How is that different than list? I didn't even know there was a list option. So that's just waiting. I wonder if they changed this protocol. Or, um, hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, yikes. So hopefully it's just like permissions. I don't think so. Oh, it is permissions. Um, flash boot one ff just YOLO. Fuck it. Uh, image is too big. Um, it's probably system. Um. I'm gonna update.zip, flash all. Yeah, boot's gonna be just the kernel. The kernel's probably in this SBF. Um. Okay, we're just gonna, yeah. Hmm.
I don't know if I want to uh, unzip that or do something to it. Like, I don't know if I just do that to the whole device. Like, the, uh, typically you would do like the kernel and things separate. So I don't know what an SBF file is. Um. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know what an. I think it's some archive. Yeah, someone has an unpacker. But they're all for Windows. Um, hopefully it's in Python or something. Huh. So, I'd love to be able to just flash that SBF, but I don't think there is a correct way. There's a tool called RSD Lite. Hmm. Oh, that's literally how Motorola flashes. So it's a Motorola tool. Um, I mean, I'll party. That sounds fun. Let's uh let's try it. Let's go grab this sketchy ass link and give it a try. rsdlighttool.com Let's grab the latest one. Uh, Google Drive. Sure. Too many users have downloaded this recently. Oh, well, let's try P Cloud. P Cloud sounds great. I love this. Yeah, just direct download that. Oh yeah, fantastic. I love P Cloud. <laughs> Whatever that is, we got it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to make sure I run this as admin. Oh, yeah. Allow access to everything, dude. For sure. Okay. So, Fastboot is ready to use, okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I'm guessing that's the file to flash. SBF, okay, sweet. So let's just, uh... Uh... Download this. 
2.3 gigs? That's massive. I can't believe how big of a firmware that is. Computer makes me sad. Subscribing for three months. Thank you so much. Where's Candy Crush? <laughs> yeah, there's no Candy Crush on, on this. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Clean. It's a clean Windows install. Clean. Um, downloads. This. Okay. That looks good. Like, all those things look fun. Look at that. Signed production. Signed production. All right, I'm going to try and boot this into a different mode then. See what I can find. I thought you worried this will break it. It won't break it. It's fine. It's fine. It's pretty hard to break a phone. I've only bricked like two phones in my life. Envy Flash, Hardware Bypass, Diagnose and Boot, Android Recovery, Boot Android, Device UID, Early BP Tools, no, RSD. I'm just going to go into RSD, starting RSD protocol support. That was an option. Oh, fuck. I uh, dropped the battery out of my phone. Holy shit. 25 tier ones from computers make me sad. Holy shit, dude. I'm fucking glad. Today's gonna be a super fun day. I love looking at some of this older stuff. People have been asking for exploitation for a long time, so I'm glad I can give it to them. Well, we'll see. We don't really know what we're gonna get to. So, basically, I'm looking at, there's this RSD option. Holy shit. Fucking 25 Subarinos. So I'm going through these options. And one of them said RSD. It's hard to read this through the webcam. BP Tools. That one says RSD, right? Given we're using something called RSD Lite, and then this is a starting RSD protocol support, which I'm guessing is what we need to do here. So I plug that in. We'll redirect this. Sometimes redirection of USB -E devices isn't perfect if they use some, like, fancy shit. So hopefully... Hopefully, this will work. Um, I'm expecting it to show up in this list. Um, I don't know if it's still installing that driver. Uh, Flash Sunfire. Okay, so it's still not recognized. I don't know if it's installing that. Oh, there we go. Ready and set up. Okay, then why is it still showing up here? Question mark. Question mark. I don't know why I can't refresh that. Ah, uh, it's still in there. The fuck, man? Hmm. 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 Yeah, find find a driver, Windows. I don't think this dialogue has ever worked for anyone. <laughs> Updates. Browse. Um, this, Motorola, RSD Lite, yeah, just search in there, oh, you piece of shit, okay, let's, uh, no, Do I not want to use the RSD protocol support? Is not is that not the one that I want to use with RSD Lite? Or is this RSD too too new, too fancy? <sighs> Driver. What's this? 
Yeah, open the URL. Yeah. Motorola USB driver. Oh, this is nice. This is a great website. I love this. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Unless I want to get an older version of RSD Lite, get this 3.6 from... I don't even know when this was. How to use. There we go. How to use it. Um, Install it. Yep, that's pretty obvious. Browse. Yep, that's pretty obvious. That's pretty obvious. Make sure it's in fast boot mode. Oh, no. You're saying I don't want to use RSD mode for RSD? Jeez. Okay. Well, I got to pull the battery again. Eh. God, I can't open this fucking phone case. There we go. Jeez. So it says it wants it in fast boot mode. I'll put it in fast boot mode, but I'm kind of... I'm kind of skeptical that that's actually what it wants. There's fast boot. Yeah. Do I need to get the Android drivers for this? Maybe? Um... Okay, uh, what the fuck do I want to do here? Is this in the NDK? No, I don't want to build fast boot. I just want fast boot. Yeah, um, unless I want uh, Motorola drivers, USB drivers. I'm pretty sure I've gotten these before. They've done the trick. Uh, this looks great. Motorola Device Manager. This is exactly what I want. 32 megs, perfect. Yeah, install this, mm-hmm. Just, this is definitely gonna work, right? Oh, no way. Really? ADB device. <laughs> Whoa, it auto restart, you piece of shit. <laughs> Not only run this admin, but loading kernel drivers. Oh my god, did I get updated? These updates should be small. I don't I don't know if this is the installer or Windows update. Oh, <laughs> Oh. Were you trying to jailbreak the iPhone in the good old days? Nah, I've never given a shit about the iPhone. The iPhone has never interested me. So do I have to reinstall that? Did that break? Did that not work? Is it all busted? God damn it. <laughs> Woo! Why? Why did I not care about iOS? It's just like... I, it's never been a very interesting target to me. It's too, like, homogenous. Never... He's not into hyped up things. That's actually probably part of it, is iOS got so much fucking hype that that kind of took away from it, in my opinion. Okay, um... So, was that this tool that died? Oh, Jesus Christ. Did that thing fucking die while... Did we get updated? Was that Windows Update? If that was Windows Update, 
that might have really fucked things up here on this VM. Because we might have gotten an update while trying to install drivers for this device manager. And that's just, honestly, not going to put us in the best, best place. We're going to try and reinstall this. Um, I think it was maybe this device manager that, that was the culprit. Congratulations, it's been installed on your computer. Okay, sweet. Does it work, though? Oh, there we go. Checking for new device software. Okay, so, yeah, we did get, like, updated while a device was getting installed. <laughs> Not as good as Geohot. I don't know. Geohot's really fucking good. Like... He also hasn't done hacking in a long time, so he's probably not very good anymore. We'll update claims another Android phone. Yeah, I don't know. It's still not really going through as I would kind of like for it to. I am in the fast boot mode. And it's being recognized as an ADB interface. There's no mode for that. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't show up until I click a thing. Maybe I have to, like, unplug and replug while this is open for it to work. Hmm. Motorola single ADB interface. Yeah. I'm going to try and go into the RSD mode, but... You had a VM called Geohot sucks while streaming. Oh, I'm not too surprised. Uh, Envy Flash... BP software bypass RSD. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that is. There's like a lot of things in here. Okay, RSD protocol. Let's try this. Motorola USB device, a flash interface. Come on. How would that not work? It shows up as a flash interface. Oh, it's taking long to launch. That's maybe a good sign. It's... Okay. Okay. Is this just too new? 2015? I do like Geohot. So does Brandon. Yeah. Yeah, we were doing live CTF and we had like a rivalry, but we have no beef IRL. <laughs> There's literally no reason to beef. MTK patch? No, I don't want that. Options? No. I don't I don't know what it wants. It's recognizing that device. Holy shit, computers makes me make me sad again with fucking 25 subs. Jesus Christ. I need to make some new emotes and stuff. All right, I'm going to try this old RSD light. We're just going to YOLO this one and see what happens. We're doing Mediafire this time. Mediafire just makes me a little bit more comfortable, you know? It's just... You can't, you can't get malware from Mediafire. Um, oh, we need to run this as admin? How the fuck? What the f what is this? Do we do we need to go get a, a Windows XP VM? <laughs> is this an XP VM sort of flashing scenario here? Okay, let's try 4.6. Maybe 3.6 was too old, but 4.6 is going to be just right. <laughs> Welcome to trying to do Android things. Is this just going to conflict with the other one? Probably. A newer version is already installed. Hmm. Okay, one third of yours is so. Holy shit, yeah, he did. It's fucking amazing. Thank you so much. Got fed up with hacking. He does AI deep learning stuff. Yeah, he's running a, like, car AI, um company and he's still um he still streams and shit he loves python yeah he doesn't care about performance sad day 
<laughs> um, how a hana, hamana, 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 hamana. Am I just ha? I don't know. Let R S D extract. Yeah, let's see what Quora has to say. Oh, here we go. Here's a great example. This, this is a, a really good response. The fastest and easiest way to open your RSD file is to double click it. This allows the intelligence of Windows to decide the correct software application to open your RSD file. <laughs> this sort of shit I love when people do this. It's literally to get their numbers up so that they can get a job and put it on a resume. Like, that's literally... Th that sort of bullshit... Well, we'll double-click it. Oh, it's technically an, R uh, an SBF file. But I'm sure we'll get the same answer. Here, we'll do this. We'll get the Moto Android Unpacker. I swear to God, this better be pre... Oh, oh, this looks good. That right there. Oh, yeah. Let's grab this. Fuck yeah. Can I run that as admin? Does it require admin? It needs .NET. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. Come on. Another reboot incoming? No, not for not for this. No. All we need to do is just get the uh, the kernel. I don't give a shit about the system. The system should be stock, but if we extract these things, we should be able to manually flash uh, the different partitions ourselves. Oh, get the professional assembly language? That sounds really good. What's funny is that I have used probably everything here. SuperSu, RSD Lite, Odin. I've used probably every version of Odin. Um, BusyBot. Obviously, this is a, a, a an Android hacker dude. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've used every single thing on here. G9300, TWRP. Trying to get that recovery. Trying to root his shit. Oh, Oh no, do I need to install my critical Firefox virus update? Oh boy, I'm really tempted to do that. Perform overly refined application.icu. Oh, that's good. Let's install. Oh, it needs an add-on. Oh. 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 Why is that? <laughs> Weird. You might need to restart for this app tour. I like how there's just not enough confidence there. It's like, there's a chance it just doesn't fucking work. Open file this. Woo! Just like any other Android tool, it does not work. Just like everything else I've ever fucking used, it just doesn't work. Fantastic. Let's go grab the next version. Um... <laughs> um What other options do I have? Here, let's just do uh let's go to GitHub. Moto Android Unpacker, I think is what it's called. D is it D Packer? Who says D Packer? <laughs> um nope, really. Uh, let's find, a. uh, I fucking love mobile hacking, dude. <laughs> it's, it's just this, and I fucking love it. I have no idea why, why. Um, it was SBF, right? SBF, yeah. Ooh, someone's asking on Linux? Oh, proof of concept. R Ruby? Ruby? Oh, wait. Is it that easy? Is it... 
Is it... Is it really that easy? Let's grab our hex editor that we use for Maple Story. Um, Multi-interface super file CSF. So those are clearly, those look like offsets. Interesting. So I'm trying to figure out if this is compressed or not. It's not compressed. So this is not a compressed file, so that's good to know. So this basically just contains... How the fuck do you write a tool that can't parse this? How? This is like the most trivial thing to parse. Oh, wait, no, it, it failed with a different error earlier. I don't think that was the error we got. Not a partition table. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Will you put it on YouTube? Yeah, I will. Gonna write a Rust SBF unpacker? I mean, we can try this. I just need to get Ruby. Um. Do I want Ruby installer? Don't I want this more official one? Why would Ruby installer be the top thing? Oh, because that's source code. I'm not going to compile that shit. Oh, okay. That, that is the thing I'm supposed to use. All right. We'll get Ruby plus dev kit. It just sounds like more stuff and more stuff always is better. 134 megs? Jesus Christ. Um... <laughs> Honestly impressed you're going to install Ruby. Oh, it's it's easier. It's easy. Open parts.sbf. Yeah, the problem is Is this supposed to have a parts file? What the fuck is this? Like, parts SBF. It's not in there. Okay. Um, read block size, read from the header, record blocks. So, this is like slightly different. Multi-interface. Android multi-interface file CSF. This kind of looks like the actual payload. Um... Read data, block size, IO position... Did you already try binwalk? I mean, I haven't. I probably should. I can't. I can't select a fucking field. Well, we'll just type it out then. Oh, Norton pop-ups. Nice. I like how that one was legit too. They just use slimy advertising. And yeah, what the fuck is this file formats? Try SBF flash. Um, well, that's the thing. Should reboot in 20 to 30 minutes? Ah, what? By uh, O10 editor. Oh, yeah, this is just a throwaway machine, so I don't actually have like real things. 
SBF Flash? Is this just a thing? Oh. I'm surprised that hasn't come up on the top of the lists. Um... I don't think they'll have it here. Uh, but that's fine. We can just... What's this git? Does this link not open? SBF flash. Oh. What? Is that just a straight binary? Um. Okay. Like. Hmm. Optical delusion. Updated SBF flash. So this is like the official one. It's the same. Raw on a Mac or Linux. Why doesn't he just fucking release the source? Like, that would probably work. I, I don't know why it's not open source. Like, actually, that makes no sense. It's such a tiny executable. Um... Yeah, why? I feel like there should be more info on this. I mean, it's probably fine. And is that just extracting it? Well, no, that's actually going to flash it. But there's an extract arg. Um... I don't know. I kind of would have expected the uh, Motorola one to work, but apparently not. I don't know. Do I want to use that? Do I want to set up a Linux VM just to run this tool? This sketchy-ass tool? I just don't understand why that wouldn't be open source. What's this? What's SBF Linux? <laughs> this is an ISO with SBF flash installed? Wait. Wait, what the fuck are these? Oh, are these bootable Linux? Whoa. What? I don't know. Whistle? I don't think Whistle will work with uh, USB. I don't think I can even use Whistle on this VM, to be honest. Um... Oh, I can maybe do the extract, but I don't think I can do uh, whistle on this. Yeah. Uh, we'll just grab an Ubuntu Live CD. Docker. <laughs> Docker for isolation. Fuck no. Fuck Docker. Um, yeah, we'll just grab. Uh, we'll grab this one. OK, 
Okay, and we'll shut this down. We'll just use the same VM, repurpose it for funsies. Okay, is that done downloading yet? Dude, what is that fucking download speed? Why is that so slow? Why are all the downloads so bad today? Holy shit. <sighs> what a fucking shitty mirror, man. Why am I getting fed from absolute garbage tier mirrors? There, we'll just click download again. And then we'll get a new mirror. And then this one will download faster. What did I fucking tell you? <laughs> it's still so slow. Probably want to download by torrent. Yeah, I probably should. I don't even know if I have a torrent client set up. No, oh, it looks like I do. Um, yeah, that's fucking incredibly slow. Let's go find, let's go find the torrent. 64 bit desktop. Yeah, grab it. Let's go add. Come on, come on, let's get some download perf. There we go. <sighs> I can shill for Whistle too. I don't, I can't install Whistle on that VM. It doesn't have uh, support for it. At least I don't think it does, because it's uh, like 20, um, it's LTSC, and it's like 2017 or 2016. I think that was bef predates um, Whistle. Do-do-do-do-do. Do do do. Is this tool gonna work? Seems like most anti cheat developers have gotten lazy and just prefer to use kernel execution. Yeah, I mean, it's the only way you can really do anything even remotely reasonable. This phone's getting nice and hot. Is Ubuntu going to work? Nah. Come on. Always oh, that last 1%. I guess it's verifying, I think. Bye. Um, add. Uh, CD-ROM. Where the fuck did that file get saved to? Uh, no, it's in downloads. Okay. Um, okay, and then boot this. I just don't want to make an EVM. Oh, look at that. Now we are booting into a hacking operating system. Wow, this Ubuntu has gotten fancy. God damn. I'm supposed to see that at least three days. I gotta get I gotta hit my ratios. That zero ratio. Oh look. Look at this. 
Uh, try Ubuntu. Okay. And then what do I want? I want like, um, uh, SBF flash or something. Optical delusion. And then I want to download SBF flash. Okay, nice. So we're gonna use a hacking prompt. Sick. Um, okay. Is this going to work, though? Is this... <laughs> How did that fail? How, how did that, how did that, how, how did that fail? What? What? How did that fail? Sick. How much fucking RAM does this have? Two gigs? Four gigs? How much RAM does... Oh, God, that's gone, dude. Well, that's dead. That VM is dead. Uh, there you go. Fuck off. Have some RAM. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Classic. This is this is about right. Like four VMs deep, and you're uh, maybe getting something extracted. Very Android. Very Android here. I love it. I like how that had a different layout than the last time we booted. That's pretty cool. I love. I love consistency like that. Oh, I need the SBF thing. Okay. Um... <laughs> Let's just keep it fucking going. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, the fucking classic. There's I don't think there's a dash x. I Oh. Good job. Good job. Hell yeah. Woo! All right, any other suggestions, chat? Coming in with the good ones today. <laughs> I fucking love this. Binwalk. Oh. What are these? Oh, those are Android tools, okay. Um. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, man. <laughs> Is there anything that works? Holy shit. Maybe try an older version. I mean, we can we can try an older version. Um, we'll try this one. <sighs> Is there like no help? 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 No way is it going to work. This file format is just too complex. <laughs> Why are these things all so fucking bad? <laughs> How hard is it to parse a fucking file? Ugh. What's this what's this say? That's the kernel. It's how to build the kernel. <laughs> I want to run the original. God damn it. <laughs> the website add command line args, yeah, extract that's it there's there's verbose we can see why it does dumb shit when it crashes oh yeah it doesn't even do anything more in verbose mode um Oh, what's this nice website? This is really good. Dude, why do people... How, like, how does someone even make this? How do you even make a website this fucking bad? <laughs> God damn it. I wonder if I ever had this working. I wonder if it's a problem with the USB pass through in the VM and it would work on a native Windows machine. I can try it. I can try RSD Lite on a laptop. Be right back. All right, we'll try it on a laptop. See if that fucking works. I'm gonna press X to doubt though. 
Why am I using the smallest possible USB cable? Okay. Getting the Motorola USB driver. Doop do doop. We'll see if this one reboots too. Didn't I click run? Why is it not running? Maybe I hit no. Or it just doesn't work. Okay, okay. We're installing drivers. I feel like I remember using this tool at some point. So it probably does maybe theoretically, potentially, possibly work. Okay, it's installing USB devices. Can I attach the USB hub? Maybe, I don't know. Sometimes USB redirection just kind of sucks. Oh my god, fuck this progress bar on this software. We did get that weird reboot while installing drivers, which was kind of weird. I don't know if that would have broken anything, but I could see it breaking things. Oh yeah, this rebooted too. Okay, that was just part of the process. That's <laughs> literally the installer does a completely unprompted reboot. Why is it rebooting? Is it going to work though? Hmm. God, booting Windows takes so fucking long, dude. Alright, let's see. Let's see if RSD Lite even works. I don't know if I want fast boot mode or not, but we'll see. Boop, boo, boo. Well, nothing has shown up so far. Yeah, it shows up as ADB interface, but it doesn't show up in this tool. Okay, so maybe fast boot ain't it. Unless this bootloader's too old, but I don't think so. Webcam view, I'm too lazy. We're just trying this out. It's not gonna work anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Shit. I don't like having to pull a battery every time I do a keyboard entry.
RSD. Battery is too low to flash. So clearly this is meant for flash, this RSD mode is meant for flashing, but I might have to let that battery charge, I guess, or something. Yeah, it's refusing to even go into that mode. So I don't even know if it's working or not. Well, that's fucking dumb. Hmm. It went into that mode before, so hopefully it will just charge up in a second here. What an absolute piece of shit. Yeah, battery's too low to flash. Okay, so we might just have to wait for that to see if that does shit. Um, God, is there anything else? All I need is to extract the kernel. Uh, let's see. Old Android phone might be unhackable. I mean, we're just trying to flash it. I can still just fucking go with what's ever on it. But I prefer not to. Um, I don't actually know if Gentoo has this. Let me see. Oh, uh, they have to have it. They have to. For sure. There's no way they don't have Binwalk. I don't know what use flags they have. It looks like they're okay. The problem with Binwalk is, like, it won't necessarily tell you if it can handle it if you had some other tools installed, but... How to extract full thing. Um, Motorola, Ben, Walk. I think we just can actually just use it on the file for now. Ah, maybe it can just find the RAM disk. So that's just add an offset. Obviously, it's going to find, like, a bunch of files and stuff. Um, it'll probably actually uh, find a um, SBL image address. So I really only need the boot image. Um, Unix path there. So, Android boot images start with uh, Android in all caps, effectively. So, we're going to just take a peek. Well, I can't control C because Vim's just doing Vim things. Oh, my fucking God, dude. Just register a control C handler. How hard is that? God damn it. Yep. 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 I hate things that do not respect control C. Um Yeah, okay, sweet. Uh, Binwalk won't really be able to extract this. Um, cause it's, uh, cause it's an offset. It's not going to extract anything from it. Or that's exclude. Um, but I don't think it's going to be able to extract that. Right, so like that would be done. Yeah, and it hasn't extracted it. So what we need to do is we need to tell it, uh, DD type, um... And I forget what the type signature is. 
let's see if I can just have it do all. I always forget this stupid syntax. Hmm. Hmm. And that should have a size in it as well. I don't know. Mm, that size is off. Yeah, I don't think that's actually a boot image. It definitely isn't. Okay. Trying to charge this battery up as much as I can. I did have the... In the bootloader, it seemed to be spin looping. So, um... I'm not too surprised that happened. Because uh, I still haven't been able to try this on the laptop. Battery is too low to flash, okay. So I guess we're just waiting even longer now. But yeah, that's not going to be a valid Android. I think it's Android Bang is the actual signature. Yeah. How is this like not a thing? Yeah, bunch a uh, bunch of these. But do they talk about what to do with them? Nope. What's flash and backup? That sounds fun. Oh, see, that looks like a fun flash and backup three. See? See this? Th oh, this looks gorgeous. Look at that. See, why aren't we using flash and backup? <laughs> cons, none. There are no cons to this. So this tool will definitely work out of the box. For sure. For sure. For sure. What is this, our fourth tool we, we've tried? Oh yeah, Lash and Backup. This is exactly what I want. Download, 700 kilobytes. I'm gonna press X to doubt here. Would you like to use this? No. Oh, is this gonna be one of the things where I have to run an installer that runs the installer installer and downloads the installer? Oh wow, that's actually a zip. I, okay, I wasn't expecting a zip. Shit. Oh yeah, look at that, just a single file. Ooh, what advertisement shit does this want me to install? Oh, Motorola tools. Oh, is this actually a Motorola thing? <laughs> oh shit. Activate phone profile. Generic 3G phones up to this boot version? I don't know, it's a, it is a 3G phone. Uh, that's, that's cool, that's cool, I like that, I like that. Um, <laughs> let's see if I... I'm gonna try and boot this. The battery's probably still too low. I don't know how long it needs to charge to get to the happy state. And I also don't know what mode I need this in. RSD. Hey, didn't complain about battery. Okay, okay, okay. So we can switch over to this USB cable and then hopefully redirect it. Um, 
It's already redirected. Okay, not a great sign. Not a great sign. <laughs> Fucking Windows search is so bad. Yeah, Motorola USB device flash interface working properly. Phone not connected. Okay. Let's try it on the laptop then. Um, this is an RSD mode. It doesn't look like it's going to open here either. Yeah. It takes a while to launch, but I, I think it just like fails to negotiate or something. So I'm going to try and this flashing back up here too. But it's just, I think it's just not going to work. <laughs> God damn it. How has no one fucking figured this out? Does this phone like predate all of these tools? And this is just that, like, old school? I'm pressing X to doubt. Hmm. Yeah, it's in that flash interface. Yeah, phone not connected. Well, I can I can try and boot it into a different mode and not in the RSD mode, but uh God damn it. Battery too low to flash. Damn it, gotta charge for longer. <sighs> I just don't think that's gonna work. I don't think it's gonna flash. I think that might be lost to history, the ability to flash this phone. Obviously it could be reversed out probably pretty easily, but Classic. Oh my god. Yeah. That's so frustrating. I just don't understand why, like, hmm. Uh, electrify, um, for all phones. No. Nope. Ugh. I mean, I think I have a, basically a stock kernel in there. I'm just so surprised. So frustrating. Like... I just don't understand why those tools just don't fucking work at all. I don't understand how you write code that segfaults. 
That's that's one thing I don't understand. Like that one tool did try. It it made progress, but Yeah. And it like showed up in here as a flash device too, which is really fucking stupid. Ugh. I don't know why no one has like an SBF. Um. I think like all of these tools were written for the droid. And basically, if you don't have a droid, it won't work. Mm. Um, not recognizing phone. Yep. Picky about their USB cables. What? Five point seven is the recommended version. <laughs> I can do that. I can I can get RSD light five point whatever. And I can use a different cord. <laughs> it just sounds like bullshit though, to be honest. 6.14, 5.7 is the recommended one. All right. I don't understand why it would be any different. Worked after installing the ADB driver. Okay, RSD light, 5.7. I'm still waiting for it to charge before I can really do anything. I have to uninstall the old one. Try a different USB port. USB 3 wouldn't recognize it. Yeah, but that's not the problem, though. Yeah, I guess I can grab ADB and see if I can get ADB to show up. We'll try it in the VM, I guess. Change to USB 2.0. I mean, I guess technically I have this plugged into USB 3. Te technically. Um, oh, no. I want RSD Lite Tool. Not RSD Lite. RSD Lite Tool. That's the correct one. 5.7. The one everyone praises and says is the best thing ever. Oh, will this work? Will RSD be in here? Probably not. There it is. Nice. Uninstalled. Dude, I like this P Cloud. This P Cloud's where it's at. I'm feeling P Cloud. This is the one. This is the one. Has a slightly different installer. Definitely an older version. Um, and then I can get uh, Android ADB. We can just see if ADB works to this as well. So you want the SDK manager. Oh my god. The Android docs are always so fucking bad. 
Oh, uh, and they push Android Studio so hard now. Wait. <laughs> oh, yeah, command line tools only. But then these, they, like, really nerfed to make these fucking impossible to use, too. So, like, using these command line tools is an absolute pain in the ass. They just, like... <sighs> It's so fucking stupid. Um, oh, I need Java. Um, sure. Sure. <sighs> Android Studio is such junk. Yeah. All the Android dev stuff is just ass. I mean, it's Java based, right? If you're doing anything Java based, it just sucks out of the box. It's impossible to write good Java code because you're using Java. Just the, the nature of using Java makes your code thereby tainted and shit. Um, yeah, they like really fucked all this stuff up. It's basically unusable if you don't use this shit or read like a million things. So we're just gonna, we just gotta grab, gotta grab Android Studio. <sighs> what is this? What is this absolute garbage? Why, why would you congratulate me for getting Android Studio? It should be a de-gratulations to your own fucking software, literally getting worse every year. You know, like the other JVM languages? No, they'll fucking suck. Achievements. Like, what? Think only gamers do development? Uh, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Oh, is this gonna install like a bunch of images and shit? I have noticed that like this stuff is basically useless. The command line tools, like, you can get it to work, but you have to like. Uh, SDK seemed line tools, so like technically, I think I want to be here. Um, bin SDK manager, and then SDK root, like I can just say is current directory, right? And then I have to actually like install shit because nothing's gonna work and fucked up my download drive or download folder, and like that's basically done nothing, I think. Um, it's just, it's so fucking hard to use now. Because once again, Java devs. So like everything is basically as convoluted as possible. And there's no way to actually figure out how to use anything. Yeah, and this shit, right, is basically not going to let me do anything until I probably make an Android project. SDK manager? Will you let me open the SDK manager? Nope, that doesn't work. Okay, so once again... Um, basically, nothing works in Android because it's Android, and it's absolute shit, and it's about the cheapest possible thing that Google is capable of purchasing in order to be competitive in the mobile space because they needed the cash. But yeah, so that doesn't work. SDK is missing. Of course it is. Um, cannot be at the file system. Okay, so this, this doesn't work either. Okay. So we have to... We have an SDK there, apparently. Oh, now, now we're going to have it after clicking edit. That's the key, is you're supposed to try to open the SDK manager, fail, click on create new project, have new project fail, have the SDK thing pop up, see that there's a blank location, hit edit, and then hit next in the pre-installed location to then download and install everything. It makes so much sense. Fucking obviously. God, <laughs> that's exactly how I expected that to work.
Wow. All right, nice. Look at that. We did it. We did it. Now can we open the SDK manager? We can. The SDK manager now will open. How cool is that? Uh, Android Studio install. Uh, where was that path? Fucking hate the app local shit. It's so annoying. Um, here we go. ADB. Well, I don't actually have the device plugged in, so we will uh, switch over to this. Like. It definitely works, right? We have we have ADB shell. I'm pretty happy to say that that's clearly working. Um, so let's try RSD light. And then who knows what mode I need to boot it in. I still haven't found any documentation that tells me if I need to boot it into RSD mode or if I need to boot it into fast boot mode. So we'll try fast boot first because it's the first entry in the list. Oh my god, I missed the fucking boot. Rip. Um. Okay. So it's in fast boot mode. And ADB interface. Yeah, if I do uh, fast boot... Uh, devices, right? It's there, right? So, like... <sighs> so... What gives? And we can select this just in case it matters. Start. Nope. Nope. Um, okay, I guess we can try and put it into RS, RSD mode or whatever. Let's see if that is any different. It's literally the name of the tool. RSD light. There's also NV flash. I think that's NVIDIA flash. Okay, now it's an RSD mode, which is a Motorola flash interface. And it's not gonna work again. Yeah, it just doesn't fucking work. Um, okay, uh, I just can't recognize the device. Yeah. Won't work with USB 3.0. Oh yeah, we were gonna try that, weren't we? Let's see if I even have a USB 2.0 port. We'll see if this works. I didn't even know if that was right. Did I... Did I switch over the right thing? Um... High speed USB. Um, interesting. Let me see. Um, 
I don't know. I, I feel like with redirection, the it probably doesn't matter, USB 3 or USB 2. It doesn't work on Windows 10? It wants to win seven, I'm guessing. We'll go get Windows seven, I guess. <sighs> Classic. I don't know if it will work with pass through. Win seven best windows? Yeah, yes it is. Um, do I get the checked build? <laughs> we got Windows 7 Pro. It's about as basic of a Windows version as you can get. That was, I think I memed about that earlier, that I probably need XP or Windows 7. Okay. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, Windows 8's pretty good too. Do do do. All right. Do you get an achievement for installing Windows 7? Nah, it's just Android. Look, Android developers, you know, you need every little bit of motivation you can get because you know that once that download finishes, you're going to be writing code in Java or, or maybe Kotlin or whatever, but you're gonna be writing code for Android devices. So you need every little upper you can get along the way. And I, I actually think that little achievement is actually a nice little touch by Google because it's basically a nod to the fact that Android is so shitty to develop on that you need a little bit of a cheer up when you download Android Studio. Is it going to work on this? My laptop did indeed have Windows 10 on it. This is the most bone stock Windows 7 Pro you can possibly get. Like no special tricks here. It's been a long time since I've run Windows 7. Oh yeah, complete that install. I forget if there's two reboots or just one. Nice, nice. Completing installation takes more time. It's probably actually doing things here. It's probably actually extracting files. Oh, there's that second reboot. Ooh, what's that video performance? Oh, it looks good. So yeah, this software would have come out for Windows 7. So this is the correct um, version to use. And then uh, just click skip and you're fine here. Uh, yeah, don't install updates. Um, <laughs> I don't want updates. Watch as this tool doesn't work unless you have like updated to specifically like 2014 patches when they actually made this tool. Wouldn't be fucking surprised. Oh, did I do 64-bit Windows 7? That was probably a mistake. Yeah, I did 64, but it, it, it'll be it'll be fine, maybe. Let's 
Come on. Oh, is this not gonna work? Because it's HTTPS? Oh no, it worked, okay, sweet. All right, we're gonna get 5.7. And pCloud, pCloud's just so good. Um, and then Motorola USB drivers. Good enough. Oh, UCloud, UCloud's not gonna work. I see, and it deleted my back tab, so yeah, that's that's not gonna work. Okay, um, so we'll get this Motorola device manager. Wow, it's been a long time since I've seen that dialog. We'll just get this going first. Windows 7, they have to support Windows 7. This came out in like 2014, 2015, this software. Windows 7 will be the pinnacle of what they support. pCloud hasn't failed us yet. Well, it has now. Wow, that didn't need a reboot. Hey, Tessie, thank you so much for the seven months. Hell yeah. 5.7. All right, this one will have to do Mediafire. Allow. When would I ever deny anything? Okay, um... So now we'll redirect the, this, Motorola Mobility. Ah, Flash Interface, installed successfully. Okay, that's good, that's good. Is it gonna work? With USB redirection, I get very concerned whether or not things will work or not, but especially on like super low level stuff like this where they might, they, Win seven, save the day. Thank God we didn't waste time on Windows 10. Yep. I'm glad we just went directly into using Windows uh, Windows 7. I like the download to attempt folder and then the copy at the end, the classic. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, they don't have downloads. I, I remember when they had this shit. It's so stupid that they don't have downloads um, as a default thing. So you have to go into here. Yeah. I have it into RSD mode, which is probably the correct mode. It says 4G Tegra. Is, was this a 4G phone? Holy shit. <laughs> I definitely didn't have 4G service on it. Bricking in progress. Yeah, I wish there was like some indicator or something. Loading RAM. Oop, waiting for re-enumeration. Okay, flashing group. Oh shit, it's doing stuff. We're going right back to the original firmware. It's signed. That's good. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to go to like official builds. Exactly the content I was looking for. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid people uh, think hacking is a lot more glamorous than what it is, which is basically what we just did. Uh, TLDR, use Windows 7 if you're ever using flashing tools because they, the drivers probably don't work with Windows 10. <laughs> I'm glad it's working with USB redirection because I've I feel like I've had issues with re, uh, USB redirection not working in like all circumstances. I'm gonna try to set my display my resolution to something better so we can see more. Um, but I'm curious if it's gonna like get very upset with me. Uh, 1440 by 900 is often what I use for VMs. 
So now we can see the full information in process. Executing, executed 9%. It's been there for a while. <laughs> it's been there for a hot minute. That person was correct. It takes 20 to 30 minutes to flash? How? I'm very afraid the battery is not going to be able to keep this alive. And then we're actually going to brick it. It's going to be great. I'm going to put that back on it. Just, like, I don't want to knock the battery out on accident. Being very careful here. There we go, the back is on. So the battery hopefully won't fall out <laughs> if I, like, set it down hard or something. <laughs> I think USB power might barely be enough. I had issues flashing my ESP32. If you use USB redirection, yeah, that sounds about right. Damn. That's exciting. All right, now we can go find a bug. So we're gonna, basically, we're gonna be running the, um, I don't know if that's gonna factory reset it too. It probably will, I'm not 100% sure. But it's a signed thing, which is really cool. What's that icon mean? I don't know. Model, flash sunfire, and we're putting on sunfire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I only used Windows 7 whenever I flashed things before, and I just kind of, I got cocky. I assumed Motorola had a higher standard of coding, um, and I was wrong. I was very wrong. Okay. Um, so... Um... What did we look for in here? What was the name of the file? Ah, oh, we didn't grab the... We didn't save that. Anyways, um... I remember the olden days uh, when I flashed Nokia DCT3 phones with a dodgy parallel port cable. A software required XP and a strange driver that allowed um, x86 ports from user space. Ah, uh, because everything was bit banged. Oh, that sounds about right. That sounds pretty pretty high quality for an, uh, Nokia, actually. What was the name of that device? There's like something. Um. This. Is this written by NVIDIA? That's not going to be a, a good sign. Oh, it's Motorola. Um, NV something. Get Tegra. So it's clearly NVIDIA based. So this is like an NVIDIA based chip. Uh, so this is the device driver. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at basically the... Uh, if read write int f. So basically this is registering the device. This is the driver name. Right, and that's what actually shows up in, in Slash Dev, and that's what we found. And then these are the file operations, and the file operations define, um, you know, read and write routines. So, like, um, oh, there's a nice sprintf. Um, God, I fucking love these. I can't wait, man. We finally made it. We finally made it. This is what I expected where we would be about five minutes into the stream is like flashing on a kernel that stock and sign such that we reset everything to like a known good state and that we had kernel source. Um, I was expecting to be there in like five minutes. <laughs> um, okay, so what is this? If this, and they just hard to find it. So we shouldn't be able to read and write. Um, 
they these interfaces just shouldn't exist but let's take a look if we were able to have rights to this so this is a user controlled buffer we would copy an l count into command buff uh without bounds checking it uh oh l count wait if it's less than that count otherwise oh wow they bound it okay oh shit look at that um if it's less than or equal to zero so this is getting the smaller of the two between the count that you provide as a user and the command buff len. And it just picks the smaller one of the two. If it's less than or equal to zero, go to done. So those minus ones are in bounds. Um, that one could potentially be at the plus one, but that's technically in bounds. Uh, this minus one is always in bounds. Um, and then L count minus minus. Um, and then we do a stir compare, nice. Love doing stir compares. Um, camera on, camera's off. Interesting. Spy a rot ring. Yeah, there's a rot ring in there. What's our progress at? Probably 30%. 34%. Okay. So anyways, we can't hit the surface anyways, so it doesn't matter. Um... um yeah, and that's a size T, so that's unsigned. So that'll, this will get unsigned promoted, and that'll actually be correct. Damn. Damn. Um, okay, anyways, we can't hit that, but we can hit the ioctal code. And we control both command and argument here. Command is basically muxing uh, what we actually do, and then the argument is typically the thing that's actually passed in. Um... It's first of all, we take a long which is controlled by a user and turn it directly into a pointer in the kernel. Um, dangerous, I would say, dangerous. Um, and then we pass it into here, and then that takes it as arg, which is the original number. Um, if num is greater than pnum cameras. Uh, which is treated as an integer, uh, so we can just go negative on that and go out of bounds on here. So that should allow us to basically just, yeah. Unless this is unsigned. It is unsigned! Num cameras is unsigned, so that will get uh, promoted to an unsigned comparison. So it's actually, it, it, it got saved once again by integer promotion. I'm sure the developers had that in mind. Um, so we don't really care about anything there, so that's picking this num and setting things for that camera. Not very interesting. So camera on. This basically enables a single camera. It's literally doing things to GPIOs, which is kind of interesting. Damn, I thought that was gonna go out of bounds. Um, if, if that literally said int, that would be a bug, right? And, and maybe exploitable, depending on what GPIO set does. Uh, we'd get control of a GPIO, and then that go in. That would go into here, so we could have this crashing on a read and this crashing. But we'd have to groom something to land before uh, this P camera structure, which is a uh, what's P? It's a global. Um, so we could actually just basically try to find a replacement object. In, in the case where we could go negative off of that, we could try and find a replacement object in global space, or with an ASLR bypass, we could put that in user space and then have a GPIO, GPIO object that's controlled in user space. So like that would definitely be kind of a game over. Um, but they got saved, they got saved. What else? File private data. Um, don't control that. That will get uh, controlled when they create the file. So when they create the file, they'll end up setting this up. So basically on open, uh, they'll set this equal to clients. Um, basically this goes through... Oh, do we have a race condition here? No, mutex lock. Okay. So they grab a lock in these clients... Mutex lock here, mutex lock here. They just do a giant lock on all of these. Um, actually, do we have a race condition? Yes, we do. 
um, this is going to get the pointer to the private data prior to this being unlocked. So this should be able to be turned into a null deref as a race condition. Now, this might get optimized in a way such that this access actually happens after um, this mutex lock just because it's not used until then. Um, but technically, this is getting, well, private data. I mean, I wouldn't, um, I don't know if I can be doing an ioctal of, on a file that I am closing. I actually don't know if Linux will allow me to do that. But that could be interesting. Anyways, that, that driver looks pretty boring. Um... I'm kind of waiting for this phone to come back online so I can see um, other devices on here. But yeah, that's basically what I'll do. So I'll just look through these and try and look for a really blatant bug. Dave FTW with the 13 months. Hell yeah. Yeah, Ioctal open and, and release are the only things that we can really do here. Um, open is just when we actually open a file. Obviously, we can open up too many things and we can get this device busy, right? Um, and I love oracles like this. I love seeing print Ks because sometimes I'll do that to verify my kernel, like, matches. Like, uh, basically, if I were to open that file three times, we should see a print K in D message. And we also should get an E busy, uh, which is just kind of, like, cool to kind of double check that you're actually seeing the right things. Um, but, yeah. Close in one thread and I act on the other. Yeah, I think that might be possible. Um, and in that situation, this might get zeroed and that's a null deref. Um, now, I don't know what... We need to figure out if we can mmap null. Because if we can mmap null, um, things could get pretty crazy here. Uh, see info. This is just a write to a... Um, this is just a write to null, so that's actually kind of useless. Because C info would be null, and then it would be this offset. So we would want, like, uh, more indirection there. But that null deer, if, even if we could map null here, we would just have something, the kernel writing something into a user-controlled page. Now, we can see, uh, if we can map null, we can use that just for fun to see if we can actually write in a 1 or a 0 and see if we can trigger that race condition. But I don't know if Linux will allow release to be executing while an ioctal is. I'm not 100% sure. Um, they do grab these mutexes, so... Th there's... I feel like this will get put after the mutex just due to how optimizations work. But I'm kind of waiting for this flash, otherwise I can't really list the devices and I don't really know what exists on this phone. Um, but general code quality looks pretty meh. Um, they're using a lot of, uh, stack-based buffers, especially for reads and writes. I suspect we'll be able to get them on that. And, um, that's on probe. But yeah, this is for the ODM camera. So, author. So we can just look for these. And see if there's anything else that stands out interesting here. Problem is, I don't want to, like, spend too much time looking at something that we might not control. So, like, here's another device, right? And this one has uh, read, write, and poll, or uh, read, ioctal, and poll. Here we have a uh, buff, which is pretty common to use two Fs. Uh, GPIO data, which is copying that. And count... So that's an integer, and the count is a uh, size t. So that one's actually okay. Uh, this gets private data, interruptible. Mem set that so it zeroes that out. Gets some mask information, and then copies this to user space. So, and then plus equals count. Um. If it's greater than that, then cap it. F pause. 
If it's greater than byte pound, uh, count go to out. So we could cause this f pause to go way, way, way uh, out of bounds. Oh, actually, it caps count here. Never mind. So we can't do that. Um, and then we can look at the ioctals here. Uh, once again, we really only care about command and arg. So command, just making sure it's only used as the actual mux, and that's true. Uh, it does get printed out, which is interesting to see. We have a get user of a value here um, of data param, which is cast to an int. Let's just see anywhere if they deref without get user. Typically, it's like on new code that's been recently added. doesn't look like it. So all of the reads and writes to user look okay here. Now, obviously, we just get to set an arbitrary value to a GPIO pin. And like that might be a problem in itself, logically. But uh, we're going to just keep going. Uh, get user int param. Set interrupt. Get this value. Set USB state. Set BP flash mode. Set that. Okay. Yeah, like... Definitely some interesting stuff there. But once again, we don't really know if we have it. I'm just kind of skimming through stuff right now. I don't really know what we're going to be able to access yet. And we'll know very, very, very soon. 83% now. What about code QL and tools like that? I'm not a huge fan. Ooh, this has debug FS. Um. Um. Tag not found this. Debug get debug set. Simple attributes. And this is some, okay, yeah. So it's basically defining the type there, okay. Come on, 87. Battery stuff often has bugs. Private data. If count is greater than or equal to a character, copy to user, irk status size of that. Is this guaranteed to be one byte? I guess so. And they use copy to user. Damn. So that lets you get the uh, IRQ status, which is kind of interesting. But we don't really care about it. What about ioctal? Once again, we don't know if any of this code is actually part of this, um, this program. So we don't know if these things matter. Uh, once again, CMD and ARG are the main things that I care about. Here's a copy from user without checking the bounds of that, but that doesn't really matter. Um, bat state. Yep, and that's fine. And then it passes if there's this function registered. It'll pass that in here, rec us, format timing. OMAP. Oh, interesting. Okay. 95%. Hopefully that's the last stage as well. I'm looking for something a little bit more obvious than these bugs. We're just going really high level. I'm looking for, like, a blatant mistake. Um, no, nothing there that's, like, terribly bad. All right, this might be it.
What's the most unlikely but serious bug you have found with fuzzing? I, there's like not really a way to answer that. I feel like it's really hard to categorize like an unlikely bug. Like all bugs are pretty unlikely. I don't know. Most of my bugs I find with source auditing. Fuzzing is just a tool to source audit in my opinion. Like, my fuzzers have found weird things, but typically nothing too crazy. Okay, now it's going to pass-through mode. BP pass-through mode. Okay. Okay. 99%. Is this where it bricks? Is this where it bricks? BP pass through. Um, BP pass through mode. I don't know what that is. It no longer says unlocked. And now we wait. It did definitely reboot. How does Android and iOS kernel fuzz? You just load in an em emulator. Like you can just run Android on your on your uh, uh, desktop in like Hyper-V or VMware. A lot of people do fuzzing on phones, but most most people who find Oday don't fuzz. <laughs> like, people just don't really fuzz things. That's just not really how it works. Fuzzing is terrible for finding good Oday. Like, if you actually want to write exploits, fuzzing is pretty fucking bad. Oh, it's hard to say if it's like doing anything. <laughs> 99, oh, air switching to pass through mode. Okay. Um, does it matter? Do I just put it, do I put it in pass through mode? Is that what it wants? Does it want me to forcibly put it in a pass through mode? <sighs> It's fine. It succeeded, guys. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's good enough. See? Doesn't say unlocked anymore. It's gonna boot. It's gonna boot straight into Android. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's going to boot into the kernel. It's not bricked. Okay, it's not very happy. Yeah, it's not very happy. It's it's trying its hardest. And I I give it props for that. First boot is usually long. Yeah, but it's not on the Android boot stage. It's on the bootloader boot stage. So I'm going to switch it over into BP pass-through mode. Let's see if we can make it work. If I can even get into the bootloader now. Well, it might be really fucked. That would explain why it can't get into the BP pass-through mode. I'm really surprised. Yeah, I think it I think it fucked itself. Like it's it's definitely not even going to register as a device anymore. I think that is donezo. Rip. Like it's not going to get into a fast boot mode.
Doop doop doop. That's pretty impressive. I don't know how you make a updater that that is that fucking bad. <laughs> um. Okay, so let's go and see. But yeah, I think that's dead. We can see if it's printing anything, but I, I don't think it is. I think it's... I mean, it's... Like, the bootloader's trying to run. So what I can do is try to reboot it now and see if I get any printout here, but I don't remember if this device actually did any printout. Yeah, I don't know how that's so fucking bad. What a piece of shit. Rip, rip the two Android 2 dream. We'll, we'll put that on the healing bench, see if it uh, makes any progress. I'm going to just straight boot that without the battery and see if it uh, makes any progress over a long time. I mean, maybe it's just an ancient phone and it takes a long time for it to decompress, but I'm pretty sure it's bricked because it won't go into the bootloader menu. Um... Hmm. Um, what is this device called? It is the Electrify. Um, so I'm curious if that will ever boot, but I think it's just stuck. Was this an Electrify M? Why should I just flash the wrong fucking firmware on it? No, it's definitely not an Electrify M. Um. Can I always access JTAG? I mean, not in like 99.99% .99 of phones. <laughs> you just don't have access to JTAG. <laughs> JTAG is not accessible in pretty much any phone that's been made in the past decade. Um... Well, we might just have to pick a different phone then. Hmm. Yeah, unless that magically mirac Oh It actually did battery question mark and then just Eggs did. Okay. Okay. It like it detected there was no battery. And that was true, I had no battery in it. I don't know, we'll just give it a, a nice long time to boot. Oh, there we go. It's back. It's alive. Yeah, it just needed some time. It just needed some time. Y'all got so scared for no reason. See? See? Yeah, there's just no way you fucking break something like that. It's, it's so incredibly hard to break things. 
Um, okay, let's see what... Yup, looks fucking good there. Looks very, looks very official. Look at that, look at that. Look at that, and you can't see anything on it. You can't see anything on that either. Nice. Oh, yeah, that focus, man. It's good. Look at that. Kernel version. Some random gibberish. That's clearly the production. Love it. Easy. God, that camera fucking sucks, man. Why won't that focus? Like, clearly the moving thing should be the primary objective of focusing. I don't understand why that wouldn't be the case. But anyways, we have that version working now. Okay, sweet. Yeah. I was not expecting that to get bricked. Like, there's... It's... As I was saying earlier, it's very difficult to brick something. Because, like, you just don't flash it. Until the firmware has been verified. Like, you download the firmware, you check the signature, and then you flash it. It is really, really fucking hard to break things. Um. Okay, so. Envy map. Oh god. This is. Probably gonna be a bug right here. Oh, and do I have cat proc k all sims? Is this? <laughs> it's not scraped. Okay, so there's our uh, there's our leak. Um. <laughs> uh. In like Android four, that got hardened. Oh, there's an M map here. Okay. So here's where we just look for like an integer overflow, and then we just map the entire kernel into user space, and then we just win. Um, that's a pretty common technique. Um, what is this doing? What? This sets up VMA. It allocates a thing at priv. And then it sets that as the VM private data. Okay. And that's a VMA priv. Okay. Um... And that's the debug FS. Oh, let's take a look at the debug FS, see if there's anything good in here. Oh, just open release. Okay. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the IOCTAL handler. The MMAP thing just registers a thing that's intended to be used by the IOCTAL at a later time. Um, this looks like, wow, there's a lot of code in here. Uh, command arg arg is now you arg. Oh, yeah. The more indirection there is, the greater the chance that people forget that this is a user argument. Now, it's still marked user. We do a copy from user of this, which has a key ID size and a handle. Okay. Um, so we read that into op, so everything inside of op is user controlled. And create claim or firm ID. Op handle is this. RH. This has an H in it, which is a handle. Okay, so there's a kernel leak, right? So basically if we call this, if we do an ioctal to NV map, uh, and we pass in the ioctal for the, uh, I guess, create, and don't have an error, then we will get a kernel pointer um, passed to us in user space. 
and then the size of it uh, will be set to op size and then copy that back out. If there was an error, free the handle. And that's on the copy. Basically, if the copy fails. Okay. Hmm. Um, I really wish C tags could handle uh, going to the next occurrence. I see param, pin molts, and map. Map into caller. Find VMA, op adder. Oh, validate get. But do I pass it the address? I do. I control the address to find VMA. Um, so that is the private data on the VMA. And then I get, this is probably type confusion. VPriv. Yeah, I think this will be type confusion here. Yeah, there's definitely gonna be bugs in this driver. Uh, get parameter, get ID, cache, read, write. It just looks like a lot of stuff to understand right now, and I feel like we can find an easier bug. Op adder. Like, this, this just seems really difficult. Let's find something better. Um... NVOS. Okay, we have an M map, another N map. What is this fucking. Wow. Private data, okay. VMA, get the size, get the page offset. This is a major hack. So we can map in, I see, so we can map in, this is intended, PFN. What? Am I reading that right? Uh, if not instance, I'm fine with that. If it's less than that, it's right combined. Otherwise, it's non-cached. Who cares? Remap PFN range. This is going to basically just map in PFN. Like, I give it... I give it the PFN, the physical address of the kernel memory. I think I literally just control that, right? PFN is VM page off. I think I literally just can map in anything. <laughs> eh? 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 Let's try it? Um... Let FD is file open dev uh, mem. Oh, yeah, and who sets up uh, file p private data? It should be open. Yeah, open's going to create instance. So we're going to hit that. Um, 
if there's mem range on the instance. So we don't know if that's gonna happen or not. So we'll just try this. Uh, dev um, NVIO, I think. NVOS. Okay. Um, okay, so that should work. I'm just going to turn this stuff off for now. Uh, extern. Okay, let me see. Hopefully, I don't need to. Oh, really? I didn't know if it'd be able to use the built-in one or not. Um, as raw FD, I think, and then I have to pull this in. Okay, and then D message unknown iactal uh, twenty three. So. And yep, that's definitely the code we're hitting. Okay, so that's confirmed that we are doing an ioctal to that device, which is sweet. So let's just try and do an mmap. Um, we're gonna mmap to uh, standard pointer null mute, length 4096, prot read. Um, I might just pull in all of libc, I'm not sure yet. Uh, flags, uh, libc, map, uh, private, and then the fd and the offset, eh, something like that. And then we'll just see if that succeeds. Okay, that failed, uh, and we can maybe see why. Access denied! If it's not equal to these, KNVOS, why, why do they use the same thing? KV, oh, KNVOS, okay, I can't, I can't call that. Okay. Unlucky. Yeah, eperm on that. Um, so, let's look at ioctal. We basically, we can't do mmap on that. Unless somehow we could convert it into something else. Um, sim creates. Oh boy. Oh boy. So that passes the arg. Um, and then this converts it into a kernel pointer. So P, copy in. Is this gonna do a... Okay, if access okay, P source for bytes. Size of L, which is param, so it's gonna copy it to the stack. I have no idea why they need all these helper functions, but whatever. Um, okay, and then this creates a new semaphore, and that has a semaphore handle, which is a pointer to a record. Uh, L sem. L. So sem and value are the only things we care about. Uh, sem is going to get nulled out by this. And then value, so it's going to create a semaphore with a value. And then this is going to copy in from arg into kernel sem, which is what? A stack local? Yeah. And then it does do cleanup on that. 
And then go to clean. Okay, kind of weird. Oh, I see. It's just the tabbing. I see. They mix tabs and spaces. Um... So do clean up is basically going to check if that was successful. If that was successful, then if error or null, kernel sem, um, I don't know how that would fail, or kernel sem, which is the handle, is less than page size. And then here, wait interruptible, we pass in this, which is a pointer, right? This is a pointer to a record. Um, this is going to do a handle search on this. Bam. Uh, that's going to crash. So, and if it writes to H, then it's probably exploitable. Um, wow. Basically, uh... It's reading kernel sem. It's basically reading a, a, a pointer and then checking page size, which is just going to be the, the 4K effectively. So let's try that. We're going to try a... Um, I'm just going to keep the mmap around because we'll probably be doing more later. Okay, and then we'll do ioctal on fd as raw fd and we have to get the ioctal code and this is always really hard to do um and then we pass in the arg here so okay and we should be able to print the results from the ioctal uh and boss okay negative one of course um, and do we get error now here? Hmm. I mean, I guess I can go here, maybe? Is this a function? Yeah, it's private module, okay. I don't know where I got error now. Um, error no location. I mean, I could also p error. But, yeah, let's try a peer. Okay. As pointer. Operation not permitted. Oh, does this have the same check up front? No. Unknown ioctal E is negative one. Is that what's happening here? Yeah, unknown ioctal 23. Let's try this. Unknown ioctal one. Okay, um. So, so it falls through, it then sets E to negative one and returns E. Oh, was this actually giving me that? I don't know if that's coincidence or not. Negative one. I wanna get a different error code. Okay, so I think we want to do semaphore destroy. 
Um, and I don't know if I have like IOW. No. These macros are a fucking pain in the ass. Um, basically, I need to go grab the structure. Uh, it it combines like a value, like two values, and then the size of the structure. So um, it's probably going to be easiest for me to just do this in C quick. Um, print f percent eight x turn to zero. <sighs> okay. And include uh is it sysioctal? Okay. Then I need to go get the definition for this, which is gonna kind of recurse us a bit. Which really sucks, because now we need all of these things, too. Um, this one's easy, because it's this is just a void star. This is clearly just an int. And then envy error is what? Uh, it's an enum, so an int. And we can get rid of envy align, and then hopefully this makes the ioctal for us. This looks about right. Okay. Bam. Operation not permitted. Unknown ioctal 20? What? What? Uh, macros don't look bad. Should I pour them? I don't really care. I'm fine doing that the C way. Um. We did 20. Yeah, I octal params. Um. What am I doing here? Oh, that's giving the number. Okay. Um, okay, so... So, and that makes sense. It is twenty. Um, N twenty octal params. Does the alignment on this matter? It said four byte alignment, but this will have four byte alignment. I don't know what else that was doing. Ioctal params. That was a pointer. This is a U32. This is an I32. Envy line four. So the size of that structure should be uh, C. And so this should probably have a C somewhere. Uh, 
Um, wait. Oh, um, I built this. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. I built the 64 bit version. Whoopsies. Invalid argument. Sweet. Um, okay, so that makes sense. So, what we kind of expect here is that if we pass this, uh, we should get an E val here. If we call, um, we're going to do destroy here. Okay. So let's try. Destroy. And this is just a fucking pointer from userland, isn't it? Like, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, it's a semaphore handle, which is just a pointer. Oh, am I stupid? No. Kernel sem. Size of kernel sem. Ref that arg. It's a pointer. Let's see what copy in does. P source bytes. Access okay. Copy from user. So it's going to just read a pointer, right? This is going to read a pointer from user space. Um, so that is our pointer. And then we're going to pass this the address of the pointer. And we should still get an E in val here. Oh. What? Hmm. Um, that copy in p dest. That should be hitting this. If is error null or it's less than page size, which I would guess zero would be void arg. Arg is the pointer itself. I don't, I don't think it's a matter of like this. Right. Um, 4,095. Yep, 4,096. Yeah. With the webcam at the top left? I mean, it's just, it's always going to be in the way. So we'll turn it off for now. Um... This isn't lining up with what I expect. Oh, did I not change this? I want destroy. What? Did I not save that file? No. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, I was about to say, like, this is not lining up with reality here. Um, it is a pointer to a pointer. Okay. Um, uh, type def void star this. That should be accurate enough. Now we don't need L. Get that out. This. Okay. So, this is going to have to successfully read a pointer from user space. So user space gives it a pointer to a pointer. So obviously that's going to fail. If we do pointer here, um, the address of pointer, fail invalid argument, which is great, we're hitting this. And if we set this to 4096, uh, I suspect um, the it might crash. Yeah, there we go. Reboot? Yep. There it is. Yeah. So, <clears throat> right. It behaves exactly as we expected. Uh, basically, we pass the kernel an arbitrary pointer, and it uses that pointer. Uh, well, we pass it a pointer to a pointer. So, basically, kernel sem is a pointer that is completely user-controlled in every single way. Right? 
Um, so that's going to call destroy traced. Is it? What file are we in right now? We're in mock tegra. Um, it's hard to say which one it will be. I'm going to just assume it's going to be this one. Once again, this is a completely user-controlled pointer. Oh, there's a deck ref. Okay, bam, we got it. Um, does that need to succeed? Oh, fuck. We need to probably like fake this thing out. Um, son of a bitch. We could also just look for an easier bug. Um, okay, so semaphore has to go into here. If error or null, this, it's not going to write anything into it. It will write something into it if it finds that node in this RB tree. And the RB tree is the H root. Oh. Wait, we give it the node. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, we just give it that. And then down sem sm, that's just a global. While node, this is traversing the RB tree, and then return data, and then this will decrement a ref count. So this would allow us, that's literally just going to subtract one, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this allows us to arbitrarily decrement something in kernel space. <laughs> And we can probably make that work. I know the webcam is in the way again. Uh, I'm going to be right back. Okay, so basically we need to make a uh, So this is a semaphore handle and a semaphore handle is a semaphore rec. So we're gonna do a uh, repper C um, struct NVOS semaphore rec and this has a struct semaphore I actually have no idea what that looks like. Um, uh, this one. Spin lock T. Jesus. Uh, atomic T. That's just a count. Okay, int. Uh, you can say that's an atomic U32. We have a semaphore. Um, we have an ID, which is a U32. 
And then we have a root, which is an RB root. Okay, so then semaphore is going to be It's going to have a lock, a uh, count, unsigned int, wait list. Uh, this is going to be a list head. Okay, struct spin lock. This is going to be the hardest one, I think. It's kinda, I'm kind of dreading this. Only one. Um... I'm guessing none of these things are here. Those all look debuggy. Uh, it looks like a, a volatile int. Okay. Then list head. Um. List head. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, press seven. Ah, just a flink blink. We'll call it next in prev. Uh, const. And they're both list head pointers. Okay, then we have an RB root, so we gotta pull all the way up. And then this atomic, we're just not gonna have it be an atomic right now. Doesn't matter. Then we have an RB root. And it's a pointer to an RB node. Okay. And RB node here. Uh, parent color, uh, use size, unsigned long. And then we have RB right, const RB node, RB left is a const RB node. And then align it to a long. That's fine. Everything in there should be long aligned. Ah, uh, we fucking killed it. Whoops. I didn't want to run that yet. Um, okay. So now what I want to do is uh, we need to construct a node record. So we're going to do that with this. Let me use node rec is equal to um, this is an NVOS semaphore record, and this will be standard mem zeroed. And then the pointer is going to be uh, node rec, uh, just a reference to node rec. And then this is going to be a reference to that. And then if semaphore, semaphore search, this is going to access h which is the semaphore handle it's going to get root which is going to be null um oh whoa dot rb node that's okay um that's we collapsed that i'm i'm going to get rid of that uh we're gonna do this struct rb root just for clarity here Um, cause that already threw me off and that's not good. Um, this is just a RB node, uh, const RB node. Okay. So that is going to get null from there. Uh, or it's going to do handle search. And if is error or null, this should not crash. No error information, perfect. And it didn't crash, perfect. That means we have constructed that object in user space. And now we basically have control of a kernel object in user space. 
Um, and now we can make these things pass or fail. So it's going to down read. We don't care about that. While deref node. So um, basically, we can now set up nodes and chain those together. Um, it's going to do an RB entry. If H is less than data H, so RB entry, that's going to be just a simple accessor, right? Um, deref node uh, as a sem node and grab the node. It's just going to get node out of there, right? I'm pretty sure it's just getting sem node. So while we have nodes, that's in an RB node. Um, hmm. Well, that's not what I want. <laughs> Um, RB entry pointer type member. So we're giving it a deref node, which is a pointer pointer, because we ref that. I see. So, uh, deref that, which is now the original node, which is this RB node. So we're basically passing in the RB node in this. So that pointer. And then we're treating that as a sem node. RB entry container of um Oh yeah, it eventually died. I don't know why. <laughs> Did we change something? Did we run it with something that we didn't want to? I don't know. Um, oh yeah, why didn't that return failure, actually? <laughs> Do we just get an arbitrary free? We can decrement something to something non-zero, or we get an arb free. Oh my god, that's sick nasty. Oh my god, yeah, with that, we could literally... <laughs> so, basically, we could, we could put a kernel object on the free list, and then have something pick it up and just use it for function pointers. Oh, there's so many, so many things that can be done with this. This bug is exploitable in so many different ways. It's fantastic. Um, I don't know why it crashed like that. I don't know what happened. Um, we did see that null there, right? That should return null. Oh, this, this one doesn't return an error. Um, so, but things should still be stable. Oh, it's... Maybe it's dying. Yeah, I think it's on its way to death. Okay, okay. It's uh it's doing things. I'll uh try and feng shui things a bit. There we go. Um yeah, that's dead. Um Well, what is that doing at the end? So we suspect that calls destroy and then break. Uh, ref pointer. I'm just going to be really strict on all of these things. Um, so that should be a pointer to a pointer. So if we make that null, right? 
This should just, yeah, invalid argument. Fantastic. And then if we do this, oh, is null not fine here? If semaphore, which we now have, sem search, h, deref h, which should be fine, which is a pointer to the zero shit on the stack. If it's an error or null, h root. Um, so this is a handle, which is a pointer to a semaphore rec, which is right here. And it takes that, it derefs it to get this element. Let's see if this works. I don't think it will. Is it dead? Yeah, it's dead. Okay. Um, that didn't change anything. So, I mean, maybe this isn't the correct size. Maybe this uh, OS semaphore rec. Um, I might see if I can, can I download with Fastboot? I don't think so. Um, I'd like to get a copy of the kernel. So, we'll see if there's anything we can do there. Um, I'm concerned that this isn't the correct size. So what I'm going to do is I think this should be okay. Node rec is equal to vec OU8. I can't imagine it's larger than that leak. As pointer. So basically I'm concerned the structure size isn't correct. It's the last field on the structure. Um... Okay, that's already, uh, and that didn't kill it. So I think we're off on our structure size. Um, okay, sweet. Uh, otherwise I would have expected that to die by now. Well, that, that makes sense. We actually provided a, uh, uh, this RB root's not in the right spot. So basically that structure shape is not correct. I don't know why it's not, but now we have to just think about it more. Uh, semaphore rec. Okay. So there should be a semaphore at the start, which is probably the Linux kernel one. Let's actually double check. Let's look at our include pathing here. Yeah, Linux semaphore. It's definitely this, uh, it's definitely the Linux semaphore. And we have a spin lock T. So now we're looking at semaphore. We have a spin lock, which maybe this lock break exists. I doubt any of the debugs are in. Um, and maybe we have, we probably don't have config. Most phones don't have config.gz enabled. Um, oh, we do. Wow. Um. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> fuck yeah. Oh, that's set. 
It's set! Woo! <laughs> Fuck yeah. Dude, I've never had a phone that has given me config.gz. Wow! I mean, we might as well. Okay, not set. What a what a friendly kernel. Uh, Ross Binlock T unsigned int. I'm fine with that. Uh, then break lock. We'll just call this raw lock. Break lock. And then we have a count. And then we have a list head. Um, which is probably coming from Linux list. Which is a next and a previous. Pointers to list head. Repercy on all of those. That looks good. So that makes up for... The bytes that we weren't expecting. Um, and then we just ref this now. Uh, do we want to look at the other things? We probably should. Um, ref count. This is an atomic T. Looks good. Nv U32. Looks good. Rb root. Uh, it's just a pointer, so it doesn't really matter. That's just an RB node pointer. Okay, this now won't crash. We're now using R0 structure, and it's not gonna crash. And it's not, sweet, because we're no longer giving it a fucked pointer. Okay, um, sweet. So now we're gonna go into the sem search, which is going to look at this RB node, and this is where we're currently returning null, right here. So this is where everything ends. Um, so while node, so it's going to deref rb node. So we pass in an rb node in rb root. So root dot rb node. We pass it a pointer. Now, if that pointer is not valid, we just return out. Otherwise, it will. I guess it's treating that as a sem node. I think rb entry is just. basically getting data H. Um, I think it's literally just interpreting that. It's getting the node field out of there, of some node. So it's treating, it's treating node as a sem node, and then it's getting that and returning a pointer to, maybe? Oh, is that, that's, uh, that's indicating which one is the RB node, okay. So it's saying which, where contains the RB node. So this is just getting that RB entry. Okay, sem node. So pretty straightforward. That's basically just going to get us um, uh, a sem node here. And that should be pretty easy. Repr C struct. Um, sem node, and then we'll do uh, node, which is going to be an RB node, which was the flink blink in color. Then we're going to have a handle, which is a semaphore handle, which is a, a pointer to a semaphore record, All right? So that is the current node. And then it's checking if it's less than or greater than. Basically, I think we need to just set up a sem node that matches the uh, current one. Or make a new sem node. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we can make another semaphore record. And this is, um, this is like, oh, wait. It needs to match ourself, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's looking for ourself in this RB tree. 
And so what we can do is node rec dot um, dot root dot rb node is equal to, and this is an rb node structure. And this rb node, uh, or that's a sem node. So uh, run all. OK, so that's expecting a pointer to an rb node. And that's fair. And what we're actually going to give it is a pointer to a sem node where the rb node is present at node. Um, so we need to make a sem node. And we'll just say uh, sem node. And we'll do a let mute sem node is equal to uh, sem node standard mem zeroed. And this is going to be equal to the address of sem node. So now we're passing what we've constructed now is that this uh, is going to have a valid pointer to a sem node structure, which is what it expects. And then we need to, um, we don't really care about right and left. We just care about H here. Uh, we want to set H equal to sem node dot h is equal to sem node uh, is equal to node rec right and that is basically going to point the handle the semaphore handle uh, and we're going to pass that to match h which is what we pass into here so this must equal pointer so to make that explicit, we can say uh, semnode.h should be identical. So, OK. And expected an RB node. Yep, as const uh, semnode, as const RB node because it's now being put into this fake uh, red black tree. And then unnode field, some node h. Oh, suddenly. Okay, cool. Um, so this is now going to make it so h matches. And then data will happen. The ref count is currently zero. So atomic deck return, I'm guessing that is giving the resultant. This will probably set this ref count to negative one. So the goal here is ref count, um, hopefully, will become negative one on the semaphore, which is the uh, sem uh, node rec ref count. So what we want is that should go from a 0 to a negative 1. And we also don't want it to crash. OK, ref count is that. And it hasn't crashed. Perfect. So um, we zeroed out that structure, right? Node rec was a zeroed out structure. We didn't set that to negative 1. The kernel did. So the kernel did uh, atomic deck return. So basically, um, God, are we going to be able to get this to arbitrarily decrement something? Um, what are the constraints on this? So, oh, I've done much longer than 23 hour streams. So, we have this node record here, and this ref count gets decremented. But it's so it's looking for itself. There's this RB tree, and it's looking for itself in the RB tree.
Um, and that. Shit. So we've we've decremented a thing, and that and that's wonderful. But that ref count is part of this record that we pass in. And this root has to be valid for us to do anything. Why is that even? Return null. And then that does nothing. Fuck. <laughs> um. So like, right now I'm seeing that we can decrement something that contains itself in like an RB tree. <laughs> a couple, like eight bytes. We can decrement a ref count eight bytes prior to an RB tree in the kernel. Which is pretty useless right now. Um. Yikes. Um. Node is equal to this. It's going until it's equal to H. Like, I don't even know why it's doing this search. Check if the node exists. Like, is that is that meant to be this, the security safety check? Is making sure it itself exists in the list that contains the RB tree? Because we can pass that check. Okay, so let's assume we hit zero. Um, here, like, the constraints there suck. I still think that's exploitable, but those are some really shitty constraints. Um, down right, and then RB erase H root data node. Uh, so that's the root, and we want to erase data node. And data is what we found. Am I crazy? It's searching for a sem node. So it's looking for the RB tree entry. And then it decrements the ref count on the semaphore itself. Data is actually a pointer to the RB tree. This is going to make modifications to that potentially. It's going to free that data. I really don't want to pollute the free list because that's going to be a mess. Um, so this has to pass here. RB erase. If not RB left, is this going to... Is that searching for node in there? But it's... And then it's gonna free it out of there. Okay, so it's basically walking the RB tree and it's going to remove... I love how there's no documentation in this fucking kernel. Maybe in the header? I don't know. Um, it's basically going to remove it from the RB tree. And when it does that, it's actually going to make a lot of writes to that RB tree. And this is where we maybe could win. Um, right, so it's going to basically remove that node and fix up the RB tree, which is going to cause a lot of writes to things in that RB tree. Um, that always returns zero. And that'll k-free data. And data is a pointer we provide. So we can put data up in free lists in the kernel. Um, I 
Then we have to find the correct object. I don't know if we're going to pass K-free. I'm assuming it's using, uh, probably using slub. I guess we can actually see. Uh, slab. Yeah, it's using a slub. With debug? Um. I don't know, maybe we just go find a different bug? That one's kind of hard. <laughs> Definitely exploitable, but probably harder than it needs to be. Uh, some clone arg? Oh yeah, what's this one gonna do? It just, is that one just gonna treat it as a pointer too? No, 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 no. Okay, so that's gonna read in the argument into here. So we have two pointers, right? Original, we control this whole structure. Everything in L is, is arbit, oops. Uh, everything in an L is arbitrarily controlled. We are then going to clone original into new. And in this case, we're going to call semaphore clone. Oh yeah, we want this. Orig. Oh yeah, that's just going to increment an arbitrary pointer. And then search. Oh, that's just even better. Uh, that one's just going to increment anything in the kernel. And then this one, we don't actually have to pass the search prior to that happening. Um, and then error, copy out, nv success, if new. So it sets new to null. And then it copies it in. Look at that. So it basically sets h new <laughs> to null. And then it copies it in such that we control h new. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this fucking code, man. Oh, jeez. This is just a much better bug. Um, copy in, size of L. So we copy in, we replace everything in L. If E is not equal to success, then invalid. That's fine. Then we're going to copy this into new. We're going to go into here. We control both parameters. Well, one's a reference to something that we control, and one is a pointer we control. It's just going to trust our pointer and ref count increase it. And then here it's going to do a handle search, and that's where we were before. As long We can just set the RB node to null, and we have an arbitrary increment in the kernel. <laughs> that's all that matters. We have an arbitrary increment in the kernel, as, and then we just pass in a null. And that's H, it's that disjoint now. We increment this ref count, and... Ooh... That has to be... Mm, it might crash here. Because... Or null. What is this? Is error value. Which I think is... Yeah, it's like... Negative... 4k. So basically, if it's between like negative 4k, well, in this case, negative 4095 and zero, um, so we can atomically increment anything. <laughs> we can arbitrarily increment something in the kernel that is. So where's ref count on a ridge? Um, it's still not as great as I would like. We can arbitrarily increment something in the kernel as long as. 8 bytes later is between negative 4095 and 0 inclusive, in which case it would only increment that thing and not corrupt anything else. Um, that is a constraint that's pretty doable. Um, we can maybe think on that one. Um... There's a lot of stuff we can do with that. Yeah. 
I, I'm pretty sure that's good enough. So let's confirm it works. Um, so we need to go figure this out. I'm, we should probably just look at more of these. Arg. Uh, okay, L, H, Ridge, Unmarshal. Um, once again, user controlled. Uh, increment the ref count, handle search. Going to do the same thing on there, so that doesn't relax our constraints. Uh, copy in the kernel semaphore from arg. Uh, this is going to do semaphore signal. This one's looking pretty clean. Uh, semaphore. If we're not in an interrupt. Okay. Then handle search and then up the sem. So that's going to search for it. We can make that pass and then up semaphore sem, which is a semaphore. And it gives a reference to that. Okay. So what we really want is some... I actually have no idea what up does. But basically, all of these have basic... They've caused writes to occur on something that is adjacent to uh, something that has a constraint on it. And that makes it hard to just have arbitrary writes. This one's interesting in that we can pass this constraint and then it actually uses semaphore sim here to up. And I have no idea what up is. Um, it's gonna be in semaphore, I'm guessing. But I have no idea what ref this is. Oh, fuck. I hate more, dude. Less is so much better than more. Colonel Sim 420. Okay. Um... Okay... Up. So this is treating that semaphore. These are now, we can arb do these things. So it's going to irk save, which is going to. The fuck is that? I'm guessing this is debug. That's probably not going to exist. Okay, it's literally doing a type check. Okay. And then uh, spin lock irk save. Preempt disable. Oh, boy. It's a little dangerous, but we could probably turn that into a good primitive. I like the other one a little bit more still. Um, wait interruptible. Search for it. And then down interruptible here. Uh, once again, dealing with locks. And I'm just really concerned about using those locks in a weird way. If k value, oh, here we go, k error, oh, so here we do the same thing, we get a pointer, right, this is a, po uh, oh, that's actually getting, uh, reading p into k, oh, and k is actually a real thing now. Now, we still use that semaphore. Once again, we have an arbitrarily controlled thing, but K is not arbitrarily controlled. Okay, so that's kind of useless. Interrupt register. Holy shit. That literally just lets you register an interrupt from user land if you have those ops. Wow. Perms on those. Okay, so I think I like... Um, I think I like this clone the most... Uh, ultimately, we're going to rely on the um, this semaphore clone, which is going to allow us to hopefully just increment something and then fail this because we pass in null for everything else. So we should hopefully be able to just increment a ref count. So that's going to go to sem clone here. Um, and... Let's try that. 
So we're gonna have to do a Rep or C on a struct um, Invos semaphore clo uh, clone params. And then we're gonna have arbitrary control of these. So we have semaphore handle. So once again, a uh, pointer to a semaphore record. This is h ridge and h new. So this is just literally meant for you to clone these semaphores. And then an error, uh, which was an i32. Right? And that's going to copy in. So we're going to have full control of l. And then it's going to call semaphore clone. And that passes in this a ridge, which is just a pointer. And then we're going to increment the ref count on that. Uh, if not a ridge or not semaphore. Yep, both of those will be valid. Um, update the ref count. And then here we will fail this search because we'll make sure that this RB node is null. Um, so we're going to make that node record. We're going to make sure RB node is null. Uh, which it is, and then all we really have to do now, um, or I guess that needs to point to a node record. Okay, so uh, let mute uh, clone params is this clone params. So that's zeroed. So that will pass the null check. And then we'll just do a ridge. I called it h ridge. Okay, I I stole their names. H ridge is equal to so this is a pointer to a, a semaphore handle, and here we can just do node rack. Um, and then sem node. And does that take a pointer to a pointer? Nope, it just takes a pointer. So this is just going to take a ref to clone params, right? OK, so that built. Everything's good. So all we've done is we've just said, I want to clone this semaphore. The error is not really used yet. All that matters is that a ridge. And then we're going to increment a ref count on this pointer. Um, and then all that matters is this uh, semaphore rec which is this, this ref count will get incremented, this will not, nothing will happen to this, and then this should be null. If this is null, then nothing else happens. Um, and that's exactly what we want to happen. So we have to uh, go and construct this structure quick um, in C, so we can just get the, uh, we just want to get the ioctal value for this, which is here. Okay. And we have the handle and then the nv error. We'll just uh, type def nv error as int. Doesn't really matter. Or we can just do enum nv error moose. It doesn't matter, right? Um, and we don't want that alignment. It doesn't matter. Everything in here is four byte aligned. nv error. Unknown type name. Let's see if we can do an anonymous enum. We should be able to in this version, yeah. Okay, so this is the ioctal. And then in our case, um, this ref count should become one. It is currently zero and it should become one. Ref count zero. Okay, did we kill it? We did not. Good sign. Okay, we didn't destroy it. Um, we also didn't have an error there. Oh, because I didn't change this field. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Is that the second time that's bit me? Um... Okay, ref count one. No crash. Ref count one, no crash. Okay, uh, so those constraints should be valid. So what we should be able to do is call this ioctal 50 times, and that should we should now have ref count be 50, right? Um, uh, 
if this is less than zero, then Pierre. So basically invoke the ioctal 50 times. Um, here we can say ioctal error. And then we don't have res. And then that ref count is hopefully 50 now. And it is. So we can basically increment, as long as something is followed by a null eight bytes afterwards, we can just increment something 50 times in the kernel, uh, which is fantastic. I think we can just get code execution uh, right away with this now. Um, I think we just won. So we're going to do ADB shell um, cat uh, proc kelsims. I don't know if I can do this, but we'll try it. Nice. Okay, um, no ASLR, no depth. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go find a table of function pointers because there's going to be a lot of nulls in function pointer tables, like one of these uh, file operations. So we can maybe keep everything into this one file. So this NV, NVOS file ops, right? If we look at file operations, there's a bunch of these things. All of these are going to be null, um, right? So we can just go find where this is. Uh, it's marked constant, so we'll have to just see if we can actually write to this uh, memory. Um, so, there's a chance that this is not writable. Um, it kind of just comes down to whether or not uh, this structure is writable. <laughs> So, we'll just go and write to this. So, remember, this is going to write to, um, so, uh, const target uh, inc. So, this is, basically, this is going to be the address that we want to increment. And then here we can actually apply the formula. Target inc, we're going to subtract off. Um, the offset of ref count, which is the offset of semaphore. Uh, so I actually just want to figure that out correctly. So we'll just do this for now. We know that this won't crash. Uh, there's no residual, there's no allocations. So let's just print um, this, which is going to be, I guess, the size of semaphore. Uh, standard mem size of semaphore. Okay, hex 14. We could have probably done that math, but uh, size is oh, hex 14. I like to note things like that, but does it line up? Uh, 48C1014. Um, so we could have just done that in our head pretty quickly. Hey, Buff Seagull, how are you doing? Thank you so much for the 10 months. 10 months hype. Okay. Uh, const inc uh, target. So this address will get incremented. And let's try it. Um, we're going to take the inc target. We're going to subtract hex 14. That's the offset of the count. That will get, uh, that will be the offset there, right? That all we care about. So that's going to sem clone. That's going to call semaphore clone. And it's just going to write to a ridge ref count. Yeah. Yeah. It's just plus OX14. So as const. Uh, snapshot rec. All right. So now what we can do is we can try to write at a specific value, a uh, specific location. Um, let mute foop is equal to uh, vec ou32 for 1024. I just want to make sure that things are nulled behind it. And then we're going to say the target that we want to increment is going to be uh, foop uh, at 34, right? So that is the one that we want to be incremented, the specific U32. Um, and I don't know if I have to go through a pointer there. And then ink target, 
is that we're going to increment it 50 times, and then we'll print uh, foop 34. So we're just validating our assumptions here. Uh, foop 34, foop, non-constant value. Uh, I agree. Uh, increment uh, targets. Okay. So hopefully that's going to specifically increment that value. Um, as cons, blah, as you size. Okay. Bam, refcon 50. Okay, we nailed it. So we are able to arbitrarily write to this is just an address. As long as there's enough nulls after it, we can write to it. So we're going to grab the address of nvos file operations right here. So that's the base of nvos file operations. Okay, and then um, we want to figure out what offset we want to go here. Uh, tag file operations. Actually, I want to make sure I don't lose this. Uh, file operations. So this is uh, 48C, um, 10, 14, 18, 1C, 20, 24, 28, um, 2C, 30, yeah, I need to make sure I get this right. Anyways, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, Forty. So this would be thirty-eight, right? So the address of F sync is all of these added up. So four times the number of highlighted things. Four times fifteen. Three uh, C. So yes, we were right. Um, so F sync. We should be able to call F sync on that FD. So that should be pretty easy to hit. So we'll call F sync. Uh, and then hopefully, let's just make sure, so f-sync, AIO, f-sync, so 14 hex afterwards. Needs to be null, no. Eight after it needs to be null. Because we're writing the ref count. So this would then, this is going to be our ref count. This is our ID. And then this is the RB root. So as long as none of these f-syncs are being used, uh, we should be fine. Um, so up here, no F syncs being used. Everything should be null. So it was a 30 or three C hex. And this is a uh, file operations, um, F sync. Okay. So first of all, we just need to see if this is going to crash. Um, it might, there's a chance that this memory is not writable. Uh, if this memory is writable, then we just won. It didn't crash. Okay, so we just incremented that to one. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to heat up the oven. All right, uh, it's game over, uh, unfortunately. Um, it's done. 
So we'll just do extern fn kernel code. This is going to be the code that we're going to execute in the kernel. Um, extern c, of course. Um, and then we'll just go get the address of uh, print k. V print k. Nah, that's not what I want. Print k. Here we go. Um, let's, let's print k is equal to this. Um, it's hard to make uh, function pointers in Rust, unfortunately. Uh, u size is equal to this. So this is the address of print k. Um, wow, how do I get the kernel manuals? So like kernel dash man or something. Um. Linux manual. Uh, it doesn't exist. Hmm. Hmm. Unless I have to manually install them. Um... Hmm. Come on. Uh, there's a dev manual, the Gen 2 development guide. No, I don't think that's it. Um... Hmm. Oh, maybe that's just doc on the kernel when you install it. Mm, I don't see a use flag for it. Oh. Uh, that's something I'd like to figure out. How do I do it from the Linux kernel manual? Or from the Linux kernel source? Linux man pages project. This isn't going to do the trick, is it? I don't know if I already have that. Uh, ah, yeah, I already have that. Um, so... Huh, there's man pages hyphen POSIX. Different languages. Huh. I'm like really surprised that's not default. I'm like super confused.
Hmm. I don't know. Is that like just not a thing that there's man pages for? Well, whatever. It's just arguments, uh, or it's just a single. It, it's just printf. Um, so what we can do is. So I don't think you can do this in Rust, unfortunately. So this is effectively what I want, but I think I have to do some like runtime code to make this work. Sadly. Um. I don't think you can do that. Yeah, non-primitive cast. So it's fucking stupid because you can do this. I can do a pointer. Um, obviously, I can't make a reference there. But like, basically, I can make it a pointer to a function pointer and then deref it, which is really stupid, but whatever. Uh, print k is equal to this. I'm going to make sure this u size technically doesn't matter in this case. Print k um, is equal to um, print k as u size it, as a pointer to a function which takes a u8. And then I can do unsafe, uh, extern unsafe. Um, I can do deref print k, and now that gives me the function pointer. I can do asdf new line, and then that, right? Um, unsafe x turn. Okay, 87. As uh, bytes, as pointer. Uh, casting that, yep, as const u size as this, right? Okay, so now what we want to do is, um, uh, let's, uh, target val, let cur val is equal to one. We already incremented it once. Um, target val is equal to the uh, kernel code function. And then uh, for cur val to target val and print um, cur x target x cur val target val. Uh, we're going to return. We're not going to actually throw the exploit yet. Um, we're just testing this to make sure it looks sane. That looks fantastic. Um, okay. And that's not going to take too many increments. So we can only run this once. Well, we can install this. Here we go. Done. Oh, fuck. We have a new address, don't we? That has changed the address. That's fine. We're gonna mark this as the current value. Bink. Um. Uh, cert cur, uh, if cur val is equal to target val, um, else, uh, we're going to return in all these cases. Um, let's say uh, print woo. Uh, certs. Um, curval. Hmm. I'll do the trick. That's going to fuck with the positioning of it. Yeah. Fuck. One oh three eight four. So that is currently where that stands in the kernel. Um, we could add a layer of indirection. Uh, 
Um, we could just make like a little trampoline. God damn it. I wonder if these are in order, like in C. I mean, we can just... <sighs> Asserts curve val is less than target val, right? Uh, less than or equal to. Uh, if it's equal, then nothing happens. And then here we can just do a libc. We can always reboot the phone to reset it uh, if we want to try something, but we just did fsync. fd as raw fd um and then here we can just say um hello from arbitrary kernel execution <sighs> did we lose it no, i rebooted fuck okay we killed it uh be right back Okay, hard to say if we had all the addresses correct or whatever, but uh, uh, we did try an fsync call, and if we do an fsync call without throwing this exploit, let's just see, let's just see, this shouldn't crash, right? Um, yeah, it doesn't crash, right? So we can call fsync on it. So we did change that function pointer. <laughs> like, we definitely changed that function pointer. Their current value is zero. Uh, increment it until the value we want. Curve val, so zero to target val. And then print k. Let's make sure print k hasn't gone for a little, little ride. I'm guessing there's no ASLR here. Uh, this? This is the same? Yeah, no ASLR. Okay. Um... Let's first make sure we can just return and do nothing. Like, we might have red zoned it. Like, there's a lot of things that maybe could have happened. I don't know if red zones exist on ARM. Okay. Um, here we go. It didn't crash. It didn't crash. Um... Wow. Um, so our print K killed us. Wow. So this code executed. Um, if I don't have this assert, this code should be the same. Yeah. Oh. Oh, maybe that increment fucks it. Um, maybe it will work on the first throw. That to there. I'm going to try a, a one shot. We're just going to YOLO try it on the first boot. I don't know why it would matter on the subsequent ones. In that case, the address did change. So we'll see what happens here. 
0 to kernel code. That's going to call that print k, and pass that parameter. And I didn't increment it 50 times before. That's not what happened. Um, D message. Oh, does this have like previous boot information maybe? Sometimes they spew the last boot. Like they say why it crashed last time. Oh, I could actually get that GCC version and probably build an identical kernel. Like a binary identical kernel. Okay, let's try this. Didn't crash. Hello from arbitrary kernel execution. Fucking easy. 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 <laughs> Woo! Woo! I was here. Yeah, I had no new line. Yup. All right, guys. You want to see a root fucking shell? Is that what y'all want? Can I make a root shell before my pizza's done? <laughs> Do I have root? I have, I have more than root. I have kernel execution. <laughs> We'll go get, uh, we'll go get, uh, reach shell. So I'm rebooting the phone here. Uh, and then we're going to, um, we're going to make a landing pad here. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Easiest shit of my life, dude. Dude, why why are why are exploits so goddamn easy? Um easy clap. Goddamn right. Um <laughs> Okay, so I need to do a, I might need to write some uh, assembly quick. Um, it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a hot minute. Um, do I control any data? No. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of this file listing shit. We don't need this. I thought we were going to have to do that to exploit this device, but uh, it turns out we didn't need it. Um, it was really cool that we did it. A for effort, but uh, yeah, it turns, out, it turns out we didn't need shit to land this. And we didn't need a, debu a debugger. Classic. Classic. Debuggers are for people who are too scared. Okay. Um... So what we're going to do is we're going to map in at a fixed address. How big is that number? That's not too big, I don't think. Yeah. Um Um, okay. 
Const uh, kernel trampoline adder u size uh, fixed address to install as a function pointer as uh, fsync handler for um, dev envos. Right? So, prot read or prot writes or prot exec uh, assert map is equal to uh, kernel trampoline address. Um, could not get kernel, oops, could not get kernel trampoline address uh, mapped. So map rwx, uh, private and fixed, and then we'll just uh, return out, make sure that code works first. Um, and this const blah. No, oh, does it want mute? I don't care. So I'll allocate one page there. This. So this is um, invoke atomic ink on uh, at increment targets um, until we reach the value we want, which is this. Okay, and then we call fsync. We're actually not going to call fsync. Um, okay, so. Oh, negative one. Uh, map and on. So fixed, private, and anonymous. Okay, so we were able to successfully map RWX memory. So this is um, allocates. Uh, RWX memory at this. Okay. And then uh, let envos is equal to file open dev envos. This is uh, open the envos device. Okay. And then we're going to do a fsync. on um, envos dot uh, azra fd what is it azra fd yep okay print And this is envos. 72, called on save function. Yep. Okay, negative one. Perfect. So obviously that fails. So, um, uh, struct implant, um, impl implant. Uh, fn new self. This will be an IO result. Uh, self. Right now we have nothing. Now look at this. Okay. Uh, open the envos device. Okay. Device is envos. Um, this is, a uh, create a new implant, uh, in the actively running kernel, and we'll do, uh, device is equal to a file. This is the, um, open handle to 
dev uh, NVOS. Okay, this is an Android implant using the uh, dev NVOS uh, exploits. What's Dev Envos? I have no idea. Some some Nvidia chipset driver thingy. <laughs> we don't we don't really know here. <laughs> Comments all that out. Perfect. Self. So allocate RWX memory. Okay, assert this, uh, here we can just if map as u size is not equal to this, uh, return error failed to allocate um, memory at this. And then I need to do like, um, IO error. Do this. Error new, error kind other, blah, blah, blah. Beautiful. Okay. So allocate RWX memory, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, make sure the allocation was successful and exactly where we needed it. And then we're gonna have um, trampoline, uh, static mute U8. This is, um, this is a pointer, or this is, a slice of memory which will be executed when uh, sync is called on dev envos. And then we can just do uh, trampoline is unsafe uh, standard slice from raw parts mute of this as mute u8. This as mute u8, 4096. Okay. And then we'll, we're gonna do um, const kernel tramp boolean size. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can do uh, let mute implant is equal to implant new. Okay, success. Everything is good there. Obviously, if like one of these addresses was fucked, right? If we change that to a one, this will allow fail. Fail to allocate at that. Perfect. So that's exactly what I want to see. Um, Open the NVOS device. Um, FN exploits, mute self. Now we'll just say exploits. It's gonna be uh, throw the exploits uh, once. Uh, ink adder u size. Uh, constraints, uh, ink adder uh, should uh, be an address uh, anywhere in virtual memory, which uh, should be incremented incremented by one. Um, the address at ink adder plus eight, uh, the memory at ink uh, should contain a um, null uh, pointer, e.g. four bytes of zeros. 
right? All right, be right back. Okay, so uh, should contain a null pointer, e.g. for uh, bytes of zeros. Um, otherwise, there will very likely be a crash. Um, so this is exploit. Uh, we should maybe mark it on safe. Okay. So then, what this is going to do is um, create a zeroed uh, semaphore. Um, it's not being used. Okay. Create a zeroed out clone parameters structure. Um, I'm going to save that address quick. This is going to be the increment address. Oh, I want plus 3c there. Increment address. Increment address. Set uh, text with this 79. Okay. Um, set up the invalid uh, kernel pointer, which will be incremented. Um, it is adjusted by OX14 bytes as the um, as the pointer is a um, as the incremented value is actually. Uh, clone params. Uh, this blah uh, ref count, which uh, ref count is at offset uh, hex 14. So we take the increment target, uh, wrapping sub uh, 14, pass that as the pointer, and then. Um, invoke the ioctal uh, to increment increment address by one. Okay. Um, and then envos. Mute uh, file. Third exploit once, incrementing uh, this by one, regardless of where it is in virtual memory. Um, Envos must be a valid um, file uh, with uh, dev Envos opened. Doesn't really matter if it's not, it probably won't do anything wrong. So we're just gonna invoke that ioctal and then let's make that a constant. Uh, is equal to this, constant this, um, e32. Uh, the magical ioctal, which we're going to exploit. as I32. Uh, increment adder. Uh, wrapping sub 14. Okay, perfect. So that's going to throw the exploits. So we're going to do four blah in zero to um, zero to 
Oh, it's not ready yet. Um. Hmm. It can be moved to self, but I'd have to make a self local and then pass that into this. And I kind of want to make this as inaccessible as possible because this is very internal workings. So um, I'm fine with how that how that's done. Okay. Uh, check if the implant is already installed. And to do this... Um, we're just going to figure out what code we need. Uh, Rust. Okay. Uh, pub fn nothing u32. Zero. Uh, C target. CPU. Uh, target. Um, arm unknown Linux GNU. Fine. Fine, then. I just need to see what uh, return zero is. Um, pubfn foop zero make Uh, so make sure it doesn't get optimized. Boop. Uh, Vim make file. Um, uh, Bob dump. A DL this Okay You fucking serious Licked thank you so much with the six months unsafe hell yeah Um where's foop at? Oh, it's there. Oh, it's mangled. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let um, trampoline is equal to unsafe this. Uh, gets a mutable reference to the uh, trampoline. Okay. Um, initialize the trampoline with a um, move R0, 0, uh, BXLR, right? Um, trampoline, copy from slice. Uh, this is for eight bytes. Copy from slice. Uh, E3, A0, O, O, E1, uh, 2F, FF, 1E. I should know that. Uh, E3, A0, 0, 0, 0, E1, 2F, F1, 1E. I think I, uh, actually fucked that up. Um... Because I think this is in the other order. Yeah, it definitely is. O O O O A zero E three one E F F two F E one. Okay. So check if the implant is already installed. We're gonna do an unsafe uh, libc f sync on nvos as raw fd. Um, let, uh, installed is equal to this, um, is equal to zero. Implant is this installed. Okay. 
trampoline. Okay. Implant is false. Okay. Uh, currently installed. Or already installed. Installed. False. Okay. So check if the implant is already installed. Uh, it is not. So if not installed, um, print. Uh, attempting to install implants, dot, dot, dot. Then we're going to do uh, four blah and zero two. Um, uh, kernel trampoline address as U size. It doesn't matter, it is U size. So this is uh, increments a value from null to this in the kernel. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, we are overwriting the uh, fsync handler in file operations uh, for Uh, this this uh, is okay with our exploit constraints as um, the next few bytes in this structure are zeroed. Okay. Then we're gonna do a self exploits. Uh, mute envos, and then the address we want to increment, which I've gotten rid of, like a fucking idiot. Um, it's just this. Okay, const envos fops. U size is this. Oops. Uh, address of nvos fops in the kernel. Okay, nvos fops plus ox3c. Um, throw exploit at uh, nvos fops uh, fsync. Okay, attempting to install implants. Um, uh, check for a successful install. Uh, print if installed, print Implant successfully installed exclamation point else return error. Um, failed to install implant is uh, this correct? Oh, that's unsafe. What? How is that unsafe? I uh, can't borrow this mutable. That's fine. I didn't even know if I need mute. I don't think I do, but whatever. We'll make it mute for funsies. Attempting to install implant. It's looping a lot. We did a pretty high address here. We could have gone with a lower one, but whatever. It's still responsive, which is good. Implant successfully installed. Sweet. Implant already installed? True. Fantastic. Okay, so it works. Um, uh, we have to increment a value from null doing an ioctal uh, for every increment until um, this. Thus, the lower this address, the better. 
Okay, I gotta grab my pizza. Be right back. Okay, so, nice. And we shouldn't have to worry about anything else in the kernel calling that. We're obviously leaving that in the kernel. Okay. Um, okay. If installed, blah, blah, blah. Um, report status. Okay, so at that point, we have an implant. Um, now we just need a, um, I guess I want, hmm. Oh my god, it's so fucking good. Okay. Nice. And we're just gonna have poop. We want it to return a zero. Um, it actually doesn't matter. If someone calls fsync on all file systems and someone has that file open, it'll crash. Really? I don't think so. Does it just call fsync on every single open file? Hmm. I mean, we could use a different uh, dispatch. Like, it doesn't matter. Hmm. I don't know what other file operation I'd want to register. Anyways. Um. So, what we can do is... Foop is going to take a... It's going to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, that. Is that valid? Oh, crap fish. I want that. I don't want to do rip rel. <clears throat> That's loading. 
What? Wow, is that literally doing what I'm telling it to? I just want BXR0. Um... I'll just write the fucking assembly. Jesus. Why would it... Yeah. Rust usually will optimize that out. Um... There shouldn't be a double DRF like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird that on x86 that would get optimized. But here it won't. I guess... Hmm. I guess it's doing another layer of indirection. I just don't know why. All right. Oh, well. Let's, uh... Um... Shell code, we're just going to do LDR. Um, I guess I want like uh, A0. That's the return value, right? A0? No, R0. Okay, what? Yeah. Um,. Right. <clears throat> um, oh. Relative to the next instruction. No, it's relative to the instruction after the next one, I think. Yep, there we go. Text plus eight. So load text plus eight. Perfect. So, installed. Pretty sure you can do LDR R0 equals. Yeah, but I want to know exactly where that value is. It'll just allocate it somewhere in data, but I want to know exactly where it is. In this case, it probably would have produced the exact same result, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then we're going to do this. Um, implant is installed. Um, Creates a trampoline that does um, LDR R0 PC, BXR0, Word um, Word uh, kernel code. Um, this will branch uh, to a uh, kernel code uh, indirectly. Um, yeah. Cool. So now we're going to do the extend uh, copy from slice here. All right. We have uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 9 f e 5 10 ff 2 f e one trampoline uh, 8 to 12 dot... Um, Copy from slice uh, kernel code as u size dot t 
to Native Indian Bites. Right? <clears throat> so there's the LDR. Okay. Uh, create a trampoline that does that. Hmm. Um. We'll call that. Increment address. <clears throat> then we're going to make a, a pub fn exploit. <clears throat> or we can just say this. Run as kernel. Execute funk as kernel. <laughs> I love that. That's so fucking sweet. <laughs> uh, funk fn... Um, uh, extern FN, <clears throat> and it can return a U32. That's the value that will return back to FSync. Um, take mute. <clears throat> Funk. <clears throat> Funk. Funk. Unsafe. F sync. <clears throat> Returns an F32. Um, execute the code by calling our um, uh, uh, implant. Self. Device. Uh, yep, self. No, we just barely don't fit now. Okay. Uh, put a ref. Eight to twelve. Foop. Ninety-two. Gone. Path. Path buff. Sem node uh, one ninety five fifty three. Okay, fine, Rust, you win. Never used, never used uh, one fifty seven. Oh, we called that unsafe, didn't we? I think that's fair. Uh, implant run as kernel. Uh, kernel code. That's going to have an invalid uh, prototype. Oh, might as well. Okay, 195. We'll just return a 123. Okay. Um, it's going to give us a negative one, I think. Oh, did that die? 
No, it didn't die. Um. Oh, I didn't run it. Implant already return. Okay, so we got a zero back. Hmm. I technically need to invalidate iCache when I do this. Um, so that one, two, three. If I do uh, negative three, let's just try this. Right, 32. Okay, that's returning back a zero. Because technically it's going into like air now. Let's just see if uh, print K is working. I don't know. Maybe I just won't have a return value. Whoa. I think his eye caches. Rindy, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Let me see if I... How do you invalidate eye caches? Uh... I thought there was a syscall for it. Um. Like, the only thing I can think of is that it's a cash problem. Um, that is MMAP invalidation. Um, cash flush. Pretty sure we can do null and zero here. Um... Hmm. I just want to see something. We're going to return one from that. Yeah, implant installed false. So that's going to be Bork now. It's not actually going to panic, but we'll just do a... We'll reboot it. Um... So it shouldn't be dead. Yeah, it's not dead. Um, okay, so yeah, it it it's a cache invalidation problem. Um, doesn't exist in this kernel. Uh, 
I thought there was a way to do it, but maybe not. I know on Windows there's a way to do it. Be right back. What kernel version is it? I have no idea. Like 2.6 something. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm also curious in libc. Do I have syscall? I do. And do I also then have fsync? Yes. Nice. Okay. Hmm. That's so weird because Linux or uh, Windows has one. Windows has a way to invalidate caches. But I don't see a way. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I won't be able to access those registers in user space. Does M protect flush caches? Um. I don't know. It's not documented cleanly. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I 
Did I try cash flush? We kind of determined it's not in this kernel, but maybe it dispatches to a different uh, thing. So we'll see what this does. Um, both caches. Oh, it's not even in fucking libc for this. <clears throat> Uh, come on, dude. No reason for that. Using Emperor to mark a bar for ex buffer executable triggers a cache flush. According to the Android Hacker's Handbook, that's, like, not good enough for me. Um, like... How is this not... More thoroughly understood. Where is it? Where is it? Where the fuck is the M map? Oh, uh, it's this M map. Um, Yeah, I'm going to have to look for the syscall on this. Okay. And we want... What? Um, this is up too. Um, here we go. There it is. And then says M map page off. So There's old and map Yep, and there's going to sys and map page off. Okay, so those both go into here. Where the fuck is that? I guess that's a generic thing. I have no idea why... I don't know. We'll take a look at this.
Flush cash. Release all MFs, okay. Remove shared VM struct. Link file. Adjust. Flush decash. Wow. Will this be on YouTube? Yeah, it will. Um, hmm. Why do they make this so fucking hard? Okay, goes right into generic, that's good. It's what I would expect. Flush cache, change protection. Okay, let's see where change protection is called. This is just uh, mprotect fix up. Success. Okay, so if change protection was if M protect fix up was successful, then it was flushed. And this is M protect. Out, out. Here. Turn error. No mem inval mprotect fix up. So fix up has to return success. The only way for this function to return success is if mprotect returns success. Oh, whoa. Oh, that's an end condition. That would return success as well. Um, okay, so yeah, it looks like mprotect should return success. I, I don't like it. Um, I don't see where that's defined. I don't know, man. Like, it looks like... That's for Blackfin specifically. Um... Dude, that's so frustrating. That's so fucking stupid. Like, I really hate that this is undocumented. Um... Try this quick. Sir, this is zero. 
sure. Sure. I think we just rebooted, so this is okay. Yeah. Um... So this won't work, it will just return zero. Okay, cool. And then let's see what happens here. Zero. Okay. Um. Hmm. Front exec. Unless it's not iCache and I'm just doing something really stupid. Um. Just want to make sure that that's getting hit. Yeah. Um. Nine FE five. Ten FF two FE one. Hmm. Like, ultimately, I don't care that it calls flush cache range. I care that it's documented and stable. I don't give a fuck about what it does. I care about what it should do. Like, I really don't care if it happens to flush it, because if it's not guaranteed, then it's not guaranteed. Fucking Linux kernel is such a heap of shit, dude. You get what you pay for, that's for damn true. Um. This isn't an exploit issue. This is a Linux kernel giving me the ability to do um, RWX code because there is no documented way to do RWX code on this system without a cache flush. It's impossible. You cannot do RWX. Like, it has nothing to do with an exploit. Uh, A3. Like, it, it doesn't seem like mProtect is, is flushing that cache. Uh, so we can try this. It's fucking dumb, but we can try a sleep. Uh, yeah, and that rebooted. Okay, cool. So, um, it is a cache problem. Um, the fuck can I do then? LER zero PC, Bixler, BXR zero. I can clobber our zero, I think. Uh, 
I'm going to change this to a slightly lower address to make the exploit land faster. Uh, and we'll see what happens here. Bam. And it's gone. Okay. Um, I guess I want to... We'll comment out this print K. We don't want to... We want to decrease the size of our payload while we're testing things. Um... Azeroth D. Unless we're getting fucked by having that file open with someone calling sync, but... I don't think that's the case. Let's, uh, we can prove that by commenting this out and just see. This should just return zero. Why not flush in the trampoline? I appreciate the advice, but also recognize that it's the trampoline that we're trying to flush. <laughs> like... <laughs> okay. Like, we could permanently have it inserted in the trampoline. We could also just unmap this shit and remap it every time. Like, which is looking a little bit more promising. Okay, zero. Nice. Okay, so it's something with our print case. Let's try a one. One. And do we just get the return code back? 249. Yeah, okay. So clearly this is executing in the kernel, which is good. I want to make sure a negative works too. Oh, I can't in this case. Perfect. Okay, so it was mainly just our uh, print K is not happy here. Um, we still haven't solved the cache flushing problem. We don't have a different address for uh, print K, do we? Come on. Um. C zero four nine five A forty eight. I don't know why this would be crashing. Hmm. What is broken there? Um, was it called as bytes? It's called uh, from the kernel? Nah, that's fine. Hmm. Do you want me to dump the kernel? I'm kind of tempted to dump the kernel. Um, I 
So you go through the trampoline. What has changed? Unless I can't clobber R0. I feel like I should be able to clobber R0. So we trash R0. We branch to this. Okay, that's fair. I can see why that would work. Uh, move our zero zero and Vixler. I didn't want to run. Whoops, doesn't really matter. I'll just reboot in the background. fuck's going on there? Oh, whoops. Um... Blix R1. I don't know why it's doing that double DRF. R0. R0, add... PC to that. PC 20 is this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh no, that died. Um So it's loading this. That's a pointer to our bytes. Then it's loading this as the address into R1. It's blixing to R1. I'm trying to think like our calling convention is different in the kernel. Um, push FPLR. BXR0. What dumbass thing am I doing? Protect. Okay.
I mean, like... I could basically just... Unmap it. And remap it. Um... Like, I could see maybe if someone's doing an F-Sync all and we're getting busted since we hooked F-Sync, uh, we could go and try and hook a different uh, syscall. What do we have? Anything in here obvious? Not really. Flock? Well, I don't think anyone's ever going to use flock. Uh, let's make sure Rust has support for that. Yeah, it does. Okay. So we could just switch using flock. Okay, change this 3C into a twenty two times four eighty eight, which is a fifty eight hex. Uh oh. Does Flock do more things than just that? Like maybe Flock. Hmm. Because it takes more args than I kind of expected here. So it has to be getting that file lock. What's check flags? Hmm. I don't like passing that um, that extra parameter. Um. Maybe locks getting invoked here. I wonder if that goes to lock instead of flock. Or I had my address wrong, but I don't think so. 18 by four, that's 48 hex. Let's try that. Nope. Yeah, I don't know how to hit flock. Let's just go back to what we had. Uh, extern FN. That's marked extern FN. F sync there. Is it the usage of the oh jeez. Um whoa. Um I'm not getting thumbed, am I? No, no thumb there. Push FPLR. Is it what's being pushed? Hmm. 
Mm. Thonk to native Indian bites. So like it's working, but the print K isn't. Which makes me believe that it's uh, some sort of cleanup. It's print K varg. It is. Oh yeah, that's probably what it is. Does that explicitly need? What does that need? not necessarily what I wanted to do but whatever um let's see if that changes it no I didn't change anything I don't know what the var arg formatting is on arm for this ABI there might be requirements for how the uh, stack is terminated or um how it's indicated where the end of it is Hmm. What if I mark the whole thing as varg? I don't know what Rust generates for varg. Pass has one named argument, of course, which is that it should be pushing those on the stack, maybe. Maybe not the first argument. I don't know if it needs to home more space. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this because I'm pretty sure this worked, right? I'm gonna mark this as returns a U32, right? And this is basically what we did before. No, that's dead. Okay. I mean, I could try something else. Um. Hmm. So one that needs to be the number of args. I don't know if that is the case if no args are being used. Let's say dot dot five U thirty two ret zero. Yeah, I don't know if there's just a different calling convention that they use. Oh, fuck, man. Why can't I call that? Yeah, it's up to the callee to determine the number of args. Um... Hmm. So we could dump the kernel quick for funsies.
Is there an indicator for the end of the kernel? BSS stop. Or end. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. End is equal to this. Start is equal to this. How big is that? Uh, eight megs, tiny. Um, I'm just going to do this. Um, can I make a vector in a static mute like that? I hope so. Nice, okay. Um, foo is vec with capacity 32 megs. Okay. Um, raw parts start as const u8 and minus start. Um, let's see if that works. Please fucking work. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> um. Um, ADB pull, data local temp, kernel, star, dot, back. Always put addresses when you do dumps and things like this, because eventually you'll forget where you actually loaded it from. Nice, it does look like this is filled in. Yeah, that's exactly the size we want. And let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> it's pretty that's pretty good. Um I don't know why print k is not working. Like I don't really care. Uh but I'm curious. Let's grab a Gehydra. Is it elf? No, it's not an elf. <laughs> uh, there's probably an elf header at the top. Uh, just elf. No, there's not. Yeah, it's just a binary. That, that's fine. That's totally what I expected. I did not expect an elf. So basically what, what we've done is we've made a bootstrapping bug. So we can use this bug to then find other bugs because now we have a kernel dump. Um,
Um. Ah, single dash. Uh, 1.8.0. Um... Um do, do, do. Cuz I kind of want to have both installed. So I have to unmask it, um, but yeah, so that's that version. Yeah, so uh, what? I'm pretty sure it's package mask. Cause it's marked as testing. Uh, uh, dev Java open JDK AMD 64. Invalid Atom and Manual Mask. <sighs> oh, it's accept keywords. There we go. Um, uh oh. Well, that's that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> that oh, I know why. It's because Java's already installed. Um, I think JDK. Yeah, so we'll get rid of the JDK. It was trying to bootstrap with itself rather than using a binary package, and of course it can't bootstrap with itself in that case. Uh, that's my theory, at least. We'll see if, I, uh, if I'm right here. I'm wrong. Fuck. Why the fuck is that the case? What's J bootstrap? Build it twice, use the results of the first. Yeah, there's, oh, I might need to unmask open JDK bin. Yeah. This, that's, that's my guess. I wasn't allowing it to use the binary package, maybe? Beautiful. Welp, that worked great. Um, <laughs> Ad immediately failed.
Okay, so C cache is just broken. That's okay. C cache sucks. It doesn't do anything, anyways. Um. Like, literally, C cache hasn't done shit for me. It's literally just been a waste of a package. The cache is just so small that it is basically useless. Here we go. I think OpenJDK builds pretty quick, so. Java in general has pretty fast build times. Um. Use this B-roll for uh, Mr. Robot. I saw it. That was pretty fucking good. Have you noticed a performance bump since switching to XFS? Yeah, quite a bit. XFS is really nice for random access. It seems like the IOPS just are much higher with it. I don't really care about reliability or anything. I've switched all of my computers to using XFS now. And Gen 2. So, we can also finish up this bug. We can, uh, we can go get, uh, we can go get, uh, uh, root. So, standard, uh, process, command, new. I don't know if I can do ID here. It's not spawn, is it? Is it start? It's, uh... Is it run? No. What the fuck is it? Is it spawn? I don't think it's spawn. Is it spawn? It's spawn. Oh, I don't want to do ID there. That's clearly not going to fucking work. No shit. Um, okay, let's just do an ID after this. <laughs> oh, weird, the phone rebooted for some reason. <laughs> Shocking. It's actually not rebooting. It's like, it's borked pretty bad in the kernel. I probably deadlocked it. It's fine. It's booting. We good. Um, is this done yet? No, not yet. Dude, this is so cool. Dumping out the entire kernel. So fucking cool. This is my pretty, pretty standard workflow for me is like basically find a bug that I can use to debug and then once I have that debug bug then actually go find a real bug. That being said, this bug is very good. Like it's 100% reliable, um, super clean. It's never going to fail. It's persistent. It's like pretty much the pinnacle of bugs. You can't really get better than this for a bug. Okay, obviously I'm not root, but we're gonna make ourselves root pretty easily. Um, so all we need to do is call commit creds. <laughs> and then we need to call prepare kernel cred. And that's it. And then we'll have root. <laughs> it's really not too bad. Um. Uh, 
Uh, commit creds takes a uh, u size to pointer technically. Um, And then prepare kernel cred is a uh, prepare. That one also, this one I think takes a U33, U32, but who cares? Um, so we're just going to call uh, commit creds and then on prepare kernel cred. It's like they were designed to be. And that one returns a use size. That one we don't care about. Something in that ballpark. Uh, we need a zero. I think that's the init is what that is. Hey, we root, boys. Wow. <laughs> wow. Linux without SC Linux. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Spooky. <laughs> I don't know if this, if this will make an interactive shell. Um... How do I make that interactive? Is there like shell equals true? Uh, uh, oh, it's because I just return after spawn. I need to wait for spawn. Um, that gets me a child, which I can then wait on. Okay. So now we can go into, like, um, uh, data, and I can see all the things, right? I can do I can do whatever I want to do. Um, <laughs> flag dot text. Yeah, th this was about as difficult as like a pretty basic CTF challenge. Everything in here was pretty bog standard. Obviously, for a CTF challenge, you wouldn't like document and clean your shit up this much. This sleep is also hacky as fuck. Uh, we still never found a solution to that. Well, actually, did we? Let's try this. Let's just see. Does mProtect work here? Nope. mProtect doesn't work. Um. Does this need to be 4K? Yes. No. <laughs> that was just coincidence. Um, fuck! <laughs> uh, let's, like, make sure the permissions actually get changed. I bet if the permissions actually go through a delta... Nope! Nope. Hmm. 
Hmm. I mean, I could it. I could turn it into executable. But I have a feeling this is going to um, basically be a false positive. Okay, yep, that doesn't work. Sweet. I'm glad that didn't work. Because um, if it did work, it's hard to say if it's just due to more system stuff happening. So, yep, doesn't work. Yeah, so whatever the Android Hacker Handbook is saying is absolutely fucking wrong. And once again, that's a reason why I don't give a shit about what the code does. I care about what the documentation says. And in the case of Linux, there's no documentation. So it just means you can't rely on shit. Uh, I'm assuming if I fully unmapped it, I would be fine. <laughs> um, I'm glad we know this, yeah. Like, I, I, I'd say that's pretty strong evidence. <laughs> Um, so What do I want to do here? Do I have to just make a mmap class? Make the trampoline temporary? Require that you pass in the temporary, uh, like, have it alive? Lean, which lives for as long as trampoline does. Bites. Uh, create, create a trampoline with uh, bites held in it. Okay. Um. Okay. Bink, bink, okay, I uh, results. Eighty two. Self. K. 
Okay, uh, create the trampoline. Mm, static meat, you eat. Eh. The backing memory. Put a little question mark on that. Impl A, trampoline A. Nice. Now, so that's detecting its install, which is good. Um, impl drop, impl A, drop for trampoline A. Fn drop mute self um, free the trampoline memory unsafe uh, mon map self dot trampoline as pointer mon map length uh do i want a zero on the length length need not be okay because i can pass the length to it we'll just do it Um, failed to unmap uh, trampoline. That one has to be a panic. Assert this is zero. Son of a bitch. All of that effort. One map. Okay, sweet. So we are unmapping. So that's just going to temporarily create that trampoline. And now we can just do the same thing down here. Uh, let mute payload is vec new. Payload extend from slice this. Payload extend from slice this um, Okay, trampoline new ref payload. Um, shit. Um, is it due to the lifetime on this? I don't know if that changes anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Extend from slice that. Shit. And then that return value mattered because that actually got plumbed through. Um, returning the um, 
U32 all the way from the kernel. Okay, and I'm going to replace this with a do nothing thing. It's just going to return one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, let's see if this works. No. Huh. Does it not work on the second go? That should live until the end of this scope. And trampoline doesn't need to be mute in either of these cases. Um, of course. Okay, is this another calling problem? So, make that trampoline. Boop, installed, and that's dead. So, Funka's U size to native Indian bytes. Make a trampoline on that. It still feels like caching problems. Which is insane if it is. Like, actually, that's so fucking stupid. That's so fucking dumb. Like, I just don't know how you can do JITs on ARM on this kernel version. I literally don't think it's possible then.
I mean, I can... I can just install one cache or install basically an indirection that goes through a global rather than write new code out. I think the problem is there's probably a different uh, iCache for kernel and user and they maybe cleared the user cache and it's not clearing the kernel cache. Um, so I just don't think there's going to be a way to clear that cache. So, Um, backing memory, create this trampoline. Trampoline zero to eight. You can say dot dot eight. Copy from slice. Okay. Pub fn. Pub unsafe. Update. Mute self. Um, address. Updates the trampoline to dispatch to adder. And then we'll just do uh, trampoline eight to 12, copy from slice, adder as um, two LE, uh, native Indian bytes. Okay. Trampoline. Uh, the trampoline to use for um, kernel to user exec or calls. Okay. Self. So, so now we're working on the D cache. I don't know there's, if there's a different D cache for user and kernel. Trampoline. Eh. Trampoline. Keep that around. This will take one of these bad boys. Oops. 70. Uh, lives for A. Lives for A. Impl A. A. Oh. Trampoline is trampoline new. C 
create the trampoline. Okay. Create the bytes, copy those things in. Hasn't been executed yet, so it's not in cache, so we don't have to worry about it. In this case, uh, we just need a room for 12 bytes. All we need space for is 12 bytes. Adder SU size, two native Indian bytes, 173. Yep. Put a question mark on there. Okay. So now this should just crash the phone. Fantastic. Nice. Because that'll jump to null. Okay. So now we're going to do. Um, uh. Pub unsafe extern fn install check u32 unsafe fn install check um a uh, trampoline to use to check for a valid install okay and then we can say trampoline update self Install check. Um, set the trampoline to use the install check code. I guess setting that trampoline is not actually unsafe. It's using it that is. So we can drop the unsafe requirement from that. Attempting to install, bam, one, two, three, okay. Everything looks good there. Let's try this, bam. Every time. Okay, and we're even mun mapping now. Sweet, that's pretty quick, I'm happy with that. Um, not bad. I should have done that from the start, but who cares? Now we can check that the uh, trampoline installs. So basically update the trampoline to use the install check. And then here we, uh, I guess here we just call run as kernel, and then run as kernel updates the trampoline. So, um, updates the trampoline function. That's really clean, man. That's so fucking cool, dude. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't want. <laughs> Um, we could literally just sticky bit something now <laughs> if we wanted to, unless there's checking on this. I, I actually don't know if they check that. Uh oh, I'm rebooting. It probably didn't like that remount. I don't think it's a exploit problem. Bin SH. Oh, unless something called sync. 
Maybe. Maybe something called sync. Um... F sync. Can't you F close it after exploit? I mean, I I do, but it it depends how long things run. Well, let's try it. Let's try sync. Ah, I don't know. That's not killing anything. So you're in the process which works. I don't know if sync would be called in from that process. I feel like that would be queued up on a K thread. I don't think it'd be run from this process. I mean, maybe. I mean, we can literally just open another ADB shell. All right. I just don't think that's how sync works. I think sync literally flushes dirty, uh, like, it it flushes out buffers. Like, it would actually invoke write with, like, pending kernel buffers. I don't think it's actually going to call fsync on all open files. Like, I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. Can you fopen in another shell? Probably. And call F sync from anywhere. I mean, F sync from another shell would crash. But I don't think anything would ever call, like, I just don't see where F sync would get called on this. Like, I, I just don't think that would ever happen. I don't think that's a, a thing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think that'll ever be called on a device. Like, ever. Uh, on a non, like, fileback device. Modified pages, yep, there won't be any. Um... Yeah, I just, I just don't think that would ever happen. Like... The device literally doesn't implement it, so no one would call it intentionally. So it comes down to, does having that registered just happen to get randomly called by the system because it's registered? And I don't think so. Like, of course no user's ever going to call sync on this because it literally doesn't implement it. Like, unless things randomly just pull and call sync on everything, uh, which doesn't seem reasonable to me. But... That's looking nice. Uh, did we get this? Th oh, that had the woo. It didn't explode. I'm curious if Ghidra works with um, Open JDK. It looks like it doesn't. Really? Wait. Didn't I install... What fucking version of Java did I install? What?
Uh, is it going to tell me? Oh, do I need to set virtual JDK? Uh, open JDK 11. I'm really fucking confused. Like... What? Open JDK. Dude, that makes no sense. That's those are the binary ones. Uh, I think something's borked on emerge. Um That's going to remove the binary packages, which I'm okay with that. Yep. Does that get rid of anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, that was that sim linked for some reason to that. Yikes. Uh, we'll see. 
We'll just reinstall it. It's just kind of strange. I think something like borked there pretty bad. Probably just due to the order of ops that I did, where I like updated to the um, the development version. Yeah, get rid of all that shit. Okay, so everything's gone. I'm just trying to double check that nothing says Java in this shit anymore. Okay. Now let's get the open JDK. And that's going to get those. I I'm just I wonder if they're if it's not rebuilding what's gen 2 VM? I wonder if it's using the uh like existing binary package. Gen 2 VM allows allow this JDK to be recognized by Gen 2. Okay. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> hmm. So that must be explicitly flagged and masked so you can't set Gen 2 VM. I don't know why though. That's kind of interesting. Um Oh yeah, we're just kind of waiting on that cuz we want to look at this Gahydra. Do do do. Do do do. I wonder if this just doesn't show up on the system. Or if it was just a weird problem with the way that was done. But seeing the Gentoo VM blocked from the use list is kind of scary. Heard about the memory tagging extension? Yeah, it's, it's uh, like everything's bypassable. All the mitigations are bypassable. They make things harder, but everything can be bypassed. It's impossible to make a mitigation that can't be bypassed. Ultimately, everything just comes down to, like, logic bugs. If you want to exploit something in a really hardened system, you just typically just do logic bugs only. It's just a lot more work in, like, reverse engineering your target, but it's typically a better way to write exploits anyways. Like, using ROP is a really shitty way to exploit things. It's just easy and pretty well understood like you can find a lot of people who can do it so you can find documentation and tools but it's not a very good way to write exploits
Didn't Microsoft implement a tool to prevent ROP? I mean, everyone has. Every every major system has ROP mitigations in. Typically, like CFG, XFG, like all of the like execution flow stuff. Yeah, it's been mitigated for a very long time. Ultimately, you just find exceptions to them, and then you win again. So it's like... I haven't really seen those mitigations really do anything too strong. Because you can typically just find something that's been allowed in the bitmap, and it just allows indirect calls, so you just win. Like, all of these mitigations are pretty much always broken. You know, like, when that one developer is like, Oh, you shouldn't implement this because I need it. And they're like, okay, we'll do, we can add an exception for you. Well, congratulations, it breaks the entire mitigation. Because you just rop to the... You just rop directly to the uh, uh, exception case. It's just like... A lot of the binary, a lot of the exploit mitigations are pretty silly. Like, you should make fucking bug uh, mitigations, not exploit mitigations. There are a couple of good mitigations, like limiting attack surface, but that's more of a bug mitigation than a an exploit mitigation. Um, initialize your stacks, initialize your heaps, just automatically initialize everything to zero on allocations, whether it's on function entry or on Malik and Kalik. It doesn't matter, just fucking zero it out, including padding bytes and metadata. Like, who gives a shit? Just zero it out, it's free. Those cycles are so cheap, it doesn't matter. Just zero that shit out. And congratulations, you've gotten rid of all use after freeze and double freeze. Congratulations, woo! How hard was that? Not very. Yay! Oh no, you lost 2% over, o overall performance on a Malik heavy target, but you mitigated basically all of the exploits that people use. Oh no! God, so fucking stupid, dude. People are so scared of like a two cycle overhead to their shitty ON cubed algorithm that is absolute fucking trash. It's like. Oh no, the compiler devs are going to add five cycles onto my shitty program that calls Sterlin 50 times because it doesn't know how to save a fucking int. Like, yup. <laughs> it's just a bunch of fucking devs who have no idea how to, how to optimize code. And they think that their code is like the most optimized thing in the world and that some malic modifications are going to change their code performance. So fucking sad. ASLR was the mitigation to ROP. That didn't work out in practice due to memory leaks being present a lot. Uh, ASLR is still really good for uh, remote. I don't think ASLR was a mitigation for ROP. I think it was a mitigation just for anything related to using a fixed address. Which, like, this bug, we're not ROPing this, but ASLR would make this bug harder because we'd need a leak. Five to ten years, memory corruption will fade away. No, it will never go away. It'll never go away until we stop using C and C++. Doesn't matter. It'll always be the most prevalent form of security vulnerability that affects, like, basically every user in the world until, um, until C and C++ go away. It'll never, it'll never even remotely be under the logic block, uh, category. Like, memory corruption is just never going away. Because C and C++ are never going away. It's just the same shit every year. No one learns how to write code better. No one will, because the languages don't allow you to. Russ has a miserable chance to surpass C and C++. I mean, I don't give a shit. I'm just stating there will always be memory corruption bugs until C and C++ go away. 
I don't even care what replaces it. I don't even care if anything replaces it. I'm just stating. If you actually care about security, then stop using C and C++. There's no exception to that. Every time someone says, oh, we're going to run AFL on it in, in our CI pipeline. Who gives a shit? AFL will never find real bugs. What if people gradually introduce changes to C and C++ that add memory safety? It just... It's just never going to happen. Like, there's too many legacy code bases, too many things that will never get updated. It's just, it's going to be a whole new company and a whole new language and a whole new OS. You'll never be able to get by with breaking legacy support. You can't. You'll never be able to get rid of legacy. Not gonna happen. C and C++ are too fast and efficient. There are plenty of other languages that are 